Well, so one, well, once the YouTube link is okay, uh, once the YouTube link is corrected, uh, we will start our program. Okay, maybe in uh, uh, five minutes from now. Okay. 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 Kencingkan dulu ya. Clip, clip, clip streaming. This is our clip streaming. Good morning, everyone. Good morning from India. So we are on the second day of Tuesday International Conference on English Literature and Language Education, Embracing Change in COVID Times. Greetings from the Department of English, Christ College, Kerala, India. It's morning here, 9.45. And... Uh, Nice to see you all on the second day of conference. Yesterday we had deliberations, discussions on teaching of language and literature. And I've got a lot of very positive feedbacks, both on keynote speeches and on the presentations that we had. And the Christ team, Team Christ is really happy about it our professors, our technicians were doing a wonderful job. And at the outset, I should thank them all for this conference and uh, streaming it live. Now, on the second day, we have uh, two keynote speeches delivered by three keynote speakers. And first speech will be a combined speech delivered by Andy Asifan and Dr. Mutnaneha from Indonesia. They work in two different universities, but uh, they are soulmates. That's what they uh, told me about themselves. And uh, then we have uh, Professor Chris Zita joining from Philippines to deliver the second keynote speech. Then we will have around 18 to 20 presentations today, research paper presentations. So as we have been uh, discussing yesterday, teaching learning process has, is going to be uh, uh, there is going to be a paradigm shift in teaching of English language and literature. 
BC and AC. COVID has divided the whole era into BC and AC. That is before Corona, before COVID, and after COVID. So naturally, there are going to be a lot of changes, a paradigm shifts in the teaching learning process. And today's addresses, today's keynote speeches, to a certain extent, will uh, address these issues. How we can better our teaching learning process in the post-COVID scenario. And again, how we can be better teachers in the new normal situation. So these are a uh, few things we'll be deliberating on today. And we also have uh, 18 to 20 research papers where we'll be discussing these issues, teaching of English language and uh, uh, literature. And also, what are the new methods that we have to adopt? What are the changes that we have to, that we have to bring in in our teaching learning process? What are the role changes happening to teachers and students, they are digital natives? So these are the points we will be discussing uh, uh, and we'll be concentrating on the second day of the conference. So once again, I uh, welcome you all to the two-day international conference on English literature and language education embracing change in COVID times. And we have with us today the head of the Department of English, Christ College, Professor P.D. Tommy, to welcome you all to this uh, August gathering on the virtual platform. So uh, here, over to you, Professor P.D. Tommy. Eminent speakers of the day, professors, teachers, colleagues, research scholars, students, ladies and gentlemen. A very and warm good morning to all of you. Charles Dickens' famous novel, A Tale of Two Cities, begins with these opening phrases. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the season of darkness, it was the season of light. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. This novel, A Tale of Two Cities, tells the story of contrast and comparisons between London and Paris during the French Revolution. We are also in a historical moment where we are facing a lot of contradictions and paradoxes. When we try to find meaning in these paradoxes and contradictions, our life becomes beautiful. We are in, a, we are in the worst of times because we are, finding, we are fighting a battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. This battle is worse because the enemy is invisible and we don't know when the coronavirus is going to strike us or where the coronavirus is going to attack us. This is the best of times also because a lot of positive changes are taking place in our lives as well as in the world. Nature has become more pure because of lesser human activity and development. Animals and birds are enjoying their freedom because the activities of the humans are either restricted or we are in a lockdown situation. Families have become dearer because we have ample time to spend with our dear ones. People are returning to literature and reading because they can't pursue their other hobbies and pastime. A lot of changes are also taking place in the academic field. A lot of innovations and experiments are taking place in the educational field so that we can survive in this difficult situation. Though very few teachers are resistant to these changes, most of the teachers are trying to become techies so that they can teach online, either from their home or from their institutions. 
the application of educational technology in the teaching and learning process has evolved a new concept called cybergogy the covid-19 pandemic has created a paradigm shift in the teaching and learning process since we have a few erudite scholars to talk on these issues i don't venture into these educational spheres it was mahatma gandhi ji who has told us be the change you want to see in the world be the change you want to see in the world with these few words i welcome all of you into the second day of the international conference on english literature and language education embracing change in covid times we have two or three sessions on these topics and we have eminent and erudite speakers to talk on these issues i welcome dr andri asrifan ums rapac indonesia to this two day national conference international conference i welcome you sir thank you thank you sir thank you we have dr mathmaina from al asira mandar university indonesia i welcome you ma'am to this second day of the international conference we have professor chris sita from royal institute of educators and philippines and i also welcome you sir to this conference also i welcome yes, dr ramal valencia tabula director for research and development bangkok thailand we have many participants from from the world representing more than 50 countries and also we have research scholars presenting their papers after these keynote sessions i welcome all the erudite professors all the participants all the scholars who are presenting the papers to this second day of the international conference on english literature and language education embracing change in covid times once again welcoming you all and also wishing a fruitful sessions and a great day thank you very much indeed thank you thank you thank you <clears throat> thank you uh, professor tommy for your uh, very active and uh, i mean uh, inspiring to a certain extent the far, the first part of his speech was really inspiring and motivating all of us to go on with the second day of the seminar so uh, i have a great pleasure in thanking professor tommy for the department of english christ college india for delivering the welcome address now without much ado and uh, i would like to welcome you again to the two day international conference on english literature and language education embracing the change in covid times and wishing everyone who have joined a bit late greetings from the department of english christ college kerala india and now we are proceeding with our first keynote speech and the first keynote speech is uh, combinedly delivered by dr matmanya from indonesia and dr andy asifan from indonesia and i have great pleasure in introducing both these speakers for very good friends of mine at the same time great scholars and they'll be talking on cybergogy in language and literature classroom and as the introduction is concerned dr matnana spdi mpd is an education expert at the educational faculty of uh, 
Asaria Manda University, Beit Sulawesi, Indonesia. Her doctoral degree is in English language teaching through uh, developing literature and also through songs, teaching literature through songs, films, novels, short story, poems, etc. Her books are or books on English cookies, English language teaching, and many other books written by her are quite uh, famous. And she's a member of association for the teaching English as a foreign language, and also part of uh, Teflin. He's a member of uh, many international uh, associations. She's part of uh, international university I mean, uh, and the University Cambridge teachers, and uh, is, she's also a member of Association of uh, Middle Level of Education, AMLE. And uh, she's going to deliver her speech along with her soulmate, Andy Asrifan. And uh, now I have uh, the pleasure to introduce Andy Asrifan. Let's go to the slide. Yes, and Dr. Andy Asrifan, SPD, MPD, from UMS Rapang, is a real scholar. When I interacted with him, I could know that he has collected or he has been attending. He was very productive in these COVID times. <laughs> has <laughs> has done at so. least 25 to 30 <laughs> courses from very famous <laughs> universities in Europe. To mention... Uh, some of them are Cambridge, Oxford, Howard University, and I was, in fact, I became a fan of him because uh, the way that he was pursuing learning for, I mean, especially in the pandemic period. Yeah. And uh, he's, he received his PhD again from, uh, again in language education. Okay, and his concentration is again in English language. So one we have in literature, another in English language. And he got a sandwich-like scholarship in Northern Illinois University, USA, published more than 20 research articles in leading journals. His research interest is in the area of English language teaching, ELTP and ESP, that is English for specific purposes, and linguistics. He has uh, his, his uh, full membership in almost all, what do you call, I mean, different uh, associations. And he's a member laureate of Cambridge Online Language Teaching Program. And uh, he's, moreover, or to highlight all these aspects, he's <laughs> a great scholar and teacher. And that's what we are interested in you, sir. <laughs> and welcome. And uh, over, to you, or, over to both of you for your uh, keynote address on cybergogy in language and literature classrooms. Okay. <clears throat> I think I've made you co-host, sir, so you can share your screen. I Both of your co-hosts, <clears throat> both Mutmaniyar and you. Okay, sir, so all the best from uh, India. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for the Chris College uh, Irin Jalakuda, uh, India, for the principal, to the faculty and staff, and uh, to Dr. Uh, Dr. Fargis for your uh, awesome uh, invitation to share each other uh, in uh, the flow in our education in the world. Uh, for this uh, in this section, we will share about the cybergogy in language and literature classroom. So we will uh, divide it uh, into uh, two uh, main subtopic. I will uh, explain and share about the theoretical, uh, the theoretical, and then my partners 
Dr. Mutmaina will share about the uh, the application of the cyber gogi in the language literature. Uh, so we are both uh, from Indonesia uh, in neighbor in my neighbor province, but the same island in Selbes. I'm in the South Sulawesi and Dr. Mutmaina in the West Sulawesi. The, sa the same island, but we are in neighbor. Uh, this is that what we'll cover here. Uh, there are four uh, main topic. The first topic is uh, the four generation. Who are they and what are their motivation? And then the key concept that we will have you understand learning in digital age. This is the core before we come to the cyber gogi. And then Dr. Mitma Inna will uh, cover the instructional design. In this case, uh, she will focus on the Azure model. And uh, the last, uh, literature in your virtual classroom. Uh, Andy, sir, yeah? uh, may, may I just interrupt? See, if you could minimize your, uh, if you could minimize your, uh, uh, that, that uh, box where we, our faces are there, that chat box, then uh, your uh, screen can be seen by whole because one part of your screen oh, is in yes. fact uh, hidden by uh, mm. the, the uh, box where we, our faces are seen. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you. That uh, zoom box. So minimize it so that yeah. we can see you, but uh, your screen will be visible fully to all the participants. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank, thank you. you thank you. We can proceed. Okay, so before we, before I start, uh, I would like to invite you for just just one minute to uh, to to fill out this this uh, uh, questionnaire. Just feel free in www.menti.com and use your code nine one seven six two eight. Just one minute max for the three question. We have three question here. the The first question is. It encourages only learning uh, environment that is andragogi, piragogi, or hitagogi, or cybergogi. Feel free in www. Okay, please feel free. Okay, cybergogi. It encourages online learning environment. That is andragogi, piragogi, hitagogi, or cybergogi. Feel free in www.menti.com and use the code 9176 and 28. Okay, the next question is, it is self-determined learning. That is andragogi, piragogi, hitagogi, or cybergogi. Okay. Okay, the last question is, what does the education 4.0 mean? That is employment-based, innovation-based, knowledge-based, or computer-based. Feel free in www.menti.com and use the 917628. Oh, innovation-based. Okay, thank you so much for all the respondents. So let's continue. Our presentation. Uh, the first point is uh, the four generation, who they are and what they are motivation. This is just uh, we flashback how the internet used in the internet uh, in in uh, uh, in a minute, sixty second. Uh, where started from two thousand and six, we can see uh, the picture that. Uh, the, you, the, the WhatsApp user, Facebook user, YouTube user here, Google user. And then there is that show increasingly to 2007, where uh, from the Facebook, Facebook user login, login in every minute, in every minute, more, more than 700,000 to 900,000. This is, this is, this is, uh, proof that uh, the, the, the consume of internet from year to year, that's 
uh, that that increase. And then uh, that's different in 2018 to 2019. From that, the show increasingly increase uh, the people who who log in, who log in, who log in, in Facebook, in uh, WhatsApp, in WhatsApp message, in Instagram, and and the Twitter, in, in Twitter send. In Mania and one Shindo. Oh yeah. Could you just minimize it? Yeah, I mean, uh, minimized it because the YouTube channel uh, uh, viewers find it difficult to see your screen. They say there's a message that we received. Okay, you I, can go I, for full screen, but yeah. uh, see, go to the top of the four boxes that you see in front of you, including yourself, and go to that uh, one. If you minimize it, click on the first icon. When you click on the first icon, first, only first see icon. nothing will be yeah, nothing will be saved. Okay. Okay. This one, is, it, is it okay now? Uh, let, let, let me check in the YouTube uh, channel side. Okay, one yeah. second. Okay. Is it good, sir? Okay now. Uh, okay. YouTube uh, channel. Okay, side. okay, no. okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, let's continue. That this is this is the picture about uh, in 2000 how the uh, uh, the internet consumed by the people in the world in uh, uh, in in every minute in 2020. Where all the component here. This is just the research from uh, official uh, chat uh, from uh, YouTube. Uh, and 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 many other platform here. That's that's many uh, factor influence uh, why why most of the platform here uh, increasingly uh, consumed by by many people because one of the uh, uh, component is uh, most of the people here now in in uh, study at home and work at home. So. Uh, technology won't replace all teacher, but the teacher who use technology effectively will probably replace teacher who do not. This is uh, I uh, I ever uh, uh, discussed with uh, some uh, professor in Indonesia when they say that uh, technology won't replace the teacher, but I see that no that that the, the teacher who use technology effectively will probably replace the teacher who do not. This is the learning uh, preference where uh, there are four generation we need here. The, the first is traditionalist, and the second is uh, generation X, and then we have uh, baby boomer, and then the, the, the millennial. Uh, there are, there are uh, the unique, unique quant in every generation here. Uh, in millennial, uh, uh, they, they like to connect with uh, instructor. And then they need structure, the strong sense with entitlement, and then expect instant feedback. It's different with the traditionalist. In traditionalist, teach a verse and uh, uh, prefer logical sequence. They need structure and then prefer to maintain their privacy. And then in baby boomer, uh, fascinate about the content, do not like rigid instruction, and they like to link to personal experience. And then also it's different in uh, generation X, where in generation X, uh, uh, they like they are in uh, informal learner. Give them choices, self-directed schedule, prepare, need life, school balance, and also like uh, freak, uh, frequent uh, feedback. This is how the develop the, uh, uh, the development of empowering and catalyzing technology, where uh, they started from the mechanism. Electronism, digitalization, and the cyber cyber physical system. Uh, the picture show that now uh, we are in education 4.0, where when in uh, started in education 1.0, that is that is the teacher center, and in education 2.0, that's the learner uh, replicas of uh, knowledge, and then education 3.0. That is the social networking, collaboration, the, the teacher and the student do the collaboration, uh, each other uh, project 
project and inquiry uh, uh, based learning and accessing global uh, 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 expertise. But it's different with the educational point, uh, point for, uh, uh, 4.0. Learner as the connector, uh, learner as the creator, and the learner as the uh, constructivist. Where learner as a teacher, the rule of the, uh, the learner is learner as a teacher. Access, they can access to their expert. And then we, uh, as a teacher, just as a resource guide. Because learner also as a content uh, producer and share, and the learner as a connection maker, open access to information, and then the web as curriculum. This is different. We are now in education 4.0. That's why the concept chain here uh, uh, in the past from the teacher center to the student center, from the single sense stimulation to the multi-sensory stimulation, from the single path progression to the multi path progression, from the single media to the multimedia, from the isolated work to the uh, collaborative work, from the information delivery to the information exchange. The target, uh, the target of education in every education from, from started from the education 1.0 to 4.0, that's quite different. Where in education 1.0, the, the target of education is in green evaluation. In the two, it, is, uh, uh, it was industry and technology. And in the education 3.0 knowledge society, but now there's the innovation society. This is uh, the reverse uh, Bloom taxonomy and then the revised Bloom taxonomy. The higher you go up in the triangle, the higher your level of thinking. In the past, we start uh, the, the, the top of the triangle is evaluation, but now in the uh, revised Bloom taxonomy is creating, starting from remembering understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. That's the, quite different from knowledge, comprehensive, uh, uh, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So all the students, we follow that how to create something, innovate something based on the target of education uh, or 4.0. Uh, the second is, let's come about the, what is the hutagogi? pedagogy or paragogy and pedagogy. Uh, Hitagogy come from the uh, uh, Stewart Hayes 2000, where they were to study to sell the term in learning. And pedagogy is uh, to construct knowledge, to connect each other, pira, peer. And cybergogy is about the internet, how uh, the student allow to use the internet and then uh, they can increase, increase the, uh, uh, the three domain uh, that is uh, cognitive, uh, emotive, and social uh, aspect. This is the digital age learning ecosystem, where uh, that's quite different with the 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 the, uh, the conventional uh, age uh, previously, uh, where we have multiple technology tool. We have in 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 the digital age learning, we have differentiation and uh, accessibility. We have supportive learning uh, environment, engine instruction strategy, assessment for learning, uh, catching uh, digital content, uh, essential question, uh, question and sense of community. Uh, Huta means uh, encourage learner to become more self-directed. Pira means focus on co-learning and co-creating. And the cyber means encourage learner uh, engagement in an online environment. Uh, this is a brief compar uh, comparison between uh, among, among the pe pedagogy, andragogy, and cybergogy. Pedagogy, this is uh, what? What, it, what is the, uh, the, 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 the pedagogy? Pedagogy here, uh, children learning. The element here, they guide it, guide it by instructional teacher, teacher do evaluation, and standardized curriculum set by the uh, social needs. And then uh, why, what's the target? That's the motivation for acquisition of knowledge or uh, uh, occupational purposes open graduation. And then the method is uh, we have the teaching staff uh, started from the uh, preparation, information sharing le or lecture, practice assignment, open, 
when the teacher comes in the classroom and then instruct to open your book uh, and, and so on. And then also we have a repetition of text or subject revision. So in andragogy, uh, that is adult learning. The element here is independent study, self-evaluation, and why? That's the full self-actualization of self-confidence. And then the method is problem solving, discussion, uh, discussion, a meeting, and conferences. And then now in the cybergogy, there's the online learning. Cybergogy is online learning. The element here, by using the connected to the culture of computer, uh, technology, and the internet, and curriculum is uh, uh, flexible, set by the learner. Uh, that is why, because that's quite approach from the data search and pressure of higher learning and assignment. The method here is information source, uh, cybersecurity measure, report writing by using word processor, uh, uh, spreadsheet, and database uh, application of the computer. This is the three components from the face-to-face, -face, online face-to-face, -face, and very open system, where in pedagogy and ragogi, there's the the face-to-face the, the -face and online face-to-face, -face, but in uh, cyber and huta, that's a very open system. So we have to uh, really to, to, to come uh, and then uh, serve our uh, material through uh, this uh, 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 system. This is the comparison of pedagogy and andragogy. Uh, and uh, here just the choose where we have to pass here. That's the 1.0, we have 2.0, we have also 3.0 and then uh, 4.0. When we choose in the 1.0, that's lecture and memorizing. Memorizing here, notes, notepad, we have native programming and then so on, a face-to-face -face classroom. When we choose the path in 2.0, that's internet enable learning. We have web 2.0, block, uh, block spot, uh, block spot uh, office uh, 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 or a course web. In, uh, uh, a 3.0, we have a knowledge production education. In this case, rapid e-learning, drag and drop, reach and contain. And in 4.0, in the in the part of point oh, we have innovative education, a production education, where the learner as a connector, creator, and uh, construct pieces. Learner as a content uh, producer, uh, learner as a teacher, and the web as a, the curriculum. Uh, diversity of network access uh, to the the learner can access to expert and also that's open access on uh, information that's the uh, where how the hit uh, in 4.0 we have we we cover hetagogy uh, pedagogy and also cybergogy i think that's all for the first uh, about the theoretical in uh, what is the cybergogy itself and we will continue with my uh, partner dr mutmaina Dr. Mena, please. Okay, Dr. Mutmaina. Okay, okay. Uh, let me in to share my content, but host, maybe host, you can let me in to share my content now. Hello. So, where is the host? Hello, host, host. Hello? Yeah, I need the host to, I, I, I want to share my content right now. Okay, you're a co-host. Once, uh, once uh, Andy, I mean, Andy stops his sharing, ask him to stop his sharing. Andy, please okay. stop the sharing so that other, I mean, ma'am can share your, her screen. Okay. Stop. Oh, now it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. so it's fine. You can share your screen, ma'am. The the hot disable me to screen sharing. I no, need... no, no, no. One, one second, one second. Let me see. I'll make you co-host. Yeah, I need one, it. One, one second. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Now you can do it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Uh, can I tell you one more thing? See, mm -hmm. the YouTube, uh, I mean, uh, participants are asking you to what do you call minimize 
the four yeah. boxes that windows so that your yeah. see yes, your your screen can be seen yeah. fully yeah this is okay. this is a uh, minimize in the i just minimize it let me yeah. see minimize it because they have been asking for a very long time yeah okay and uh, no you you minimized it yeah this is minimize i see it on uh, youtube really yeah clear 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 is it clear in youtube yeah okay fine yeah. fine because they've been asking All right okay ma'am so you can proceed okay. with your presentation all the okay. best ma'am thank you very much um good afternoon uh, uh in uh, from indonesia and good morning good morning india india right. <laughs> okay uh, thank you very much to uh, all of the uh, participant who attending today and the committee the principal uh, many thanks uh, from us we Uh, can collaborate our presentation today under the topic the cyber group in language and literature classroom i want to uh, continue from mr randy's uh, presentation about the cyber group in language and literature classroom and this is uh, the the practice uh, there are two excuse uh, there are two point i will uh, share to you this is based on my experiences interactional design by using a sure model and literature in the uh, virtual classroom as you know they uh, we are today remote our teaching and learning process uh, we are transformation our face to face uh, learning and teaching process into the uh, virtual uh, classroom and this is a uh, accused a student and educator to improve their digital skill what is digital skill this is one of the uh, 21 uh, century uh, a skill or a competence and then uh, actually the uh, uh, cybergogy this is uh, the combination between uh, pedagogy and technology uh, they bring uh, the gogi uh, family and this is when you add a uh, remote your teaching and learning process from face to face or blended learning into the online or full uh, learning you Uh, use uh, the strategy by synchronous or asynchronous. This is very different between uh, online and then uh, when you are remote your teaching and learning process by using uh, the platform or uh, many more. This is based on your uh, deal with your student and uh, the you can design your classroom, your virtual uh, classroom. and this is a synchronous strategy or a synchronous strategy you choose to remote your learning and teaching process uh, during the covid-19 most of the teacher in mindset uh, they remote uh, a te teaching and learning process by using online or uh, do, uh, use uh, online uh, this is namely a synchronous when they remote their learning and teaching process by using webex or zoom like today we are in the international conference or webinar uh, this is a very high bandwidth and uh, rest uh, much money and then uh, another one a synchronous learning what is a synchronous learning when you are remote your teaching and learning process without real time interaction uh, you can record yourself and then you can collaborate uh, collaborate a group by using a Or, main, uh, or many uh, gamification and etc. And you can use a WhatsApp, Edmodo, and uh, Class Dojo. Many things uh, you can remote your uh, teaching and learning process by using this uh, strategy, a synchronous learning strategy. And then we go to the new mind today. In the new mind today, there are four zones here. There are four uh, color. yellow zone a green zone and this is a blue zone and the red one a yellow zone and green zone and the blue zone this is for low bandwidth this is a minimum a quota and and need uh, you remote your uh, teaching and learning process uh, with a synchronous strategy and here we are this is the last one the very high bandwidth or uh, this is a uh, namely Uh, syn synchronous this is synchronous when you add a uh, remote hello ma'am hello mutmani ma'am uh, with uh, hello ma'am uh, streaming hello ma'am conference yes uh could you just put it in the presentation mode slide show 
presentation mode now you are playing uh, not in the presentation mode okay. so it's very uh, just put it in the presentation mode so that people who are watching on mobile can see your uh, screen full put it in the presentation mode presentation means uh, in the slide show mode you are not doing the slide show mode now smart. press f5 f5 i f5 press f5 or click on slide show okay uh -huh. i not must yet. Full, not yet full... yeah full screen full screen full screen full screen, full screen no okay. no 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 you, you no. your other slide show. yeah okay. that's it okay yes okay okay, okay, okay ma'am thank you thank you okay and you, now we are going to uh, talk about all of this uh, color zone when you are uh, remote your teaching and learning process by uh, yellow zone in the yellow zone you can uh, use the tool for example you record uh, recording yourself by using zoom or webex uh, google meet and etc and then uh, this is normally a, a synchronous strategy and next in the green zone you use the uh, mail and collaborative document or a group chat like using a whatsapp you are in the uh, blue zone area and the last one uh, like today we are uh, in the conference uh, streaming video by uh, live, live uh, video conference uh, namely uh, synchronous synchronous and all of this uh, synchronous strategy and then what about design and uh, literature uh, you know uh, based on my uh, preliminary research uh, most of the students uh, choose uh, with the genre like poetry uh, drama uh, novels a uh, film and etc a uh, zone uh, this same with uh, dr gada uh, has explained uh, yesterday and th this is the concept what is uh, literature this is the uh, creative idea a communication and admiration war. And this is why I use uh, literature. This is the reason uh, liter literary work or literature can be used as a medium, medium in teaching and uh, English for a second language lesson. And this is the reason why using literature, uh, there are a linguistic reason, methodological and motivational reason. And now we are going how to uh, design and developing our Material-based uh, uh, student uh, need analysis. I use a sure uh, model, and in the activity, I uh, design by using a gagne and an event interaction. Interaction. And then, uh, in a sure model, there are uh, six steps. Uh, for the first step, you are analyze your student uh, learner you identify what is your student uh, condition. Most of the teacher today, they think when they are uh, not online to remote their teaching and learning, uh, this is uh, not again uh, suitable for the uh, condition uh, during the COVID-19. In, uh, in the, their mindset, uh, online uh, learning and teaching process, this is uh, online. Uh, actually, uh, this is only the strategy, uh, you know, there are two strategies, synchronous or asynchronous. And you can analyze your student based on their need and student condition. When your student condition, they are more familiar by using WhatsApp. Why? You can use a uh, WhatsApp and remote in teaching, uh, your teaching and learning process. Uh, mainly, you are in the uh, blue zone. And the next, you state the objective. This is to get your student what a student need to learn. Uh, this is uh, for uh, get your learning outcome. And here are the select uh, method and uh, media uh, material. Uh, this is one of the benefit by using a sure you can uh, assure a model model you can choose the technology and integrated uh, technology or many platform. Uh, to remote your teaching and learning uh, process. I think this is a uh, very uh, adapt with this condition uh, during the COVID-19. And this, in this area, you are uh, uh, apply, when you are apply your, uh, uh, your materials, you in the classroom, this is uh, the step, you ut utilize uh, media and material, require learner participation and evaluate. Uh, in this, uh, I will share to you how to remote, how to you drive to your, uh, your classroom 
you design your classroom by, by using uh, interactional design, uh, Gagne, and even in, in interaction. And this is the design the learning materials. You can use uh, some of the application of software, uh, Articulate Mobile, Lecturer Inspire, and Mobile Learning Android. And you know, uh, your uh, book now, we are going to ebook. For example, you can go to my Google Playbook. Uh, this is the book about uh, literature and, uh, and the lesson plan by using Gagne and even in a interaction interaction uh, in the lesson plan. This is uh, when you go to the uh, Google uh, Playbook. And this is the content when you are uh, wanted to design your material, uh, developing your uh, materials, you can use Articulate Mobile Design this is the content. There is a video, there are a video anima animation, picture, and many more. And this is the lecturer inspire uh, 18. Uh, this is the content. Uh, actually, you can download it this uh, from Google and design your uh, material. The content when you are design your uh, material based on the mobile uh, learning Android application. There is a profile document and then a question and answer. This is for the student, group student and group communication. And what about the interactional design? Uh, there are nine even interactional design uh, based on the Gagne uh, theory uh, to get uh, more fun your classroom. Uh, this is the interactional in the pre-interactional phase gaining attention, informing objective, recalling previous knowledge, in gaining attention uh, phase, this is the uh, activity that you can stimulate your uh, student. Informing objective, a learning outcome, and then uh, recalling previous knowledge, the activity you can question and answer uh, for the student, giving a summary and many more. And then the next, uh oh oh. Okay, in, in interactional pace, uh, presenting stimulus uh, material, providing learning guidance and eliciting the performance, this is the activity that you can uh, analyze the topic or the concept and then giving a student, for example, study analogy, picture or graphic. And then uh, in this uh, step, you can ask your student to uh, practice or problem solving and making decision. Uh, the last for the post interactional design, providing feedback, this is the activity that you can uh, do, uh, assessing the performance test and uh, 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 pre-test. A pre post, pre test or pre uh, post test, and enhancing retention and transfer. You need to your student uh, to predict uh, giving hypothesis and solution based on the concept uh, or the problem that you given to your uh, student, your class. And what about the literature in the virtual classroom? This is, for example, based on my class, my experience. Uh, they are using their mobile, uh, the book uh, by using. Uh, Google Playbook ebook. This is ebook. Uh, watching a uh, film and then they answer the question from their uh, mobile or their uh, smartphone or their handphone. This is the activity. This is the method. Uh, like uh, yesterday, uh, Propnik uh, collaboration and a cooperative. This, uh, this area, they are collaborate and they are. Uh, a discussion by using cooperative learning. This is the classroom, apply, and this is the book. You, the books you can find, uh, my, my book in the Google, my playbook. Uh, I shared to you the link uh, on the chat box before. And this is a uh, class out and class on. Uh, actually, you know, uh, today we, uh, our, uh, close, uh, our uh, school is closed, but uh, our class uh, still on in the uh, virtual. This is by using a uh, Zoom and uh, class dojo. We remote our teaching by using uh, two strategies, synchronous 
in this area synchronous and in this area a synchronous strategy. This is the student project. They are uh, upload uh, their uh, project, video uh, project. Uh, this is integrated uh, skill or integrated uh, integrated uh, competent by using a uh, film uh, literature. You can see here the activity. Uh, this is the, the step when you are uh, using or design your uh, material based on the film. Uh, there is the, the step from warm up, presenting, practice, production, and evaluation. This is for example, uh, an example activity. And this is uh, when you are uh, uh, practicing the example. Uh, the student re, uh, they are rearranged the scan of the film. They are okay. Uh, in this in this uh, activity, the student film, they arrange the the picture based on the film scan. This is one of the example that you can do in your classroom. And what about the song? This is the song. This is the activity when you are listening to the song. And for example, activity, I show you. Uh, this is for example when you, uh, for the activity in the classroom when you uh, you design uh, your uh, material or developing your materials based on uh, a short model. And this is the activity too because standard related to the weather and you can uh, stimulate your student by using a picture. You can go to my uh, Google Playbook to uh, the more information about uh, using uh, literature in the classroom in application. And what about the novel? This is a novel from, uh, this is the website, uh, newscaster novel based on my student condition, their level or their degree, uh, they are in the beginner and I use a novel only 100 uh, vocabulary and the novel include with the uh, picture. You can go to this website to download uh, many more uh, a novel, kind of novel from 100 vocabulary until uh, 1000 vocabulary. This is uh, based on your student condition, your student need and your student level. Uh, this is the activity, for example, you can see here. And then what about the short story? This is integrated, actually integrated skill or a student uh, competent in English. Uh, this is the activity, fill in the blank, arrange the paragraph into the right story, recite the short story. The body room, uh, when you are uh, design your uh, material based on the form, uh, this is the activity. And namely, uh, strategy here, acrostic of form. This is acrostic, uh, acrostic of form. By using your name, you create your form. Uh, this is the example of uh, acrostic form. And what about the drama? Read script, role play, and arrange a paragraph or white dialogue. This is, for example, activity you can discuss with your group, and then you can uh, create your own uh, a dialogue. Okay, what about are you facing the challenge? and uh, developing your uh, material. Uh, this is the tips to make uh, your teaching uh, fun. In the input, you can create your materials based on your student needs. You can use uh, a sure a model. And then what about uh, rules, roles, and routine? You can tell all of your students. You can make a deal with, the, with your student and giving a contract with them. And the technology tool. I very uh, uh, stress this uh, technology tool 
uh, you can uh, use the technology tool based on your student condition, your student need. If they need a synchronous strategy, like a live streaming by using Webex or Zoom, go. You can do that, but remember, uh, when you are remote your teaching and learning process by using a synchronous strategy, this is a very high bandwidth and need uh, uh, need uh, a good connection or internet and red uh, money. I mean their the, uh, student uh, quota. And then in the process, you can design your process. Here we are the content, the material, use uh, your guest for smile and eyes contact. Uh, in this uh, process, uh, you need to be uh, uh, present your uh, social uh, social present when you are remote your learning and teaching in the uh, virtual uh, uh, classroom. And then the last, the output. What about the output? This is a collaborative or digital skill and the learning outcome. You can design your uh, output uh, based on the student uh, need. And then this is the same with the uh, tell before uh, opening in this uh, second day international conference webinar. And then I uh, agree with this uh, quote. And this is the reference. And I think uh, this is thank you very much. I back to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, ma'am. Uh, that was uh, both of you. Congrats. Thank you. I think enough for my presentation. Yeah, so, it was a wonderful presentation, ma'am. Uh, could you could you stop your screen sharing? Okay. In fact, that was. Uh, Wonderful presentation, ma'am. Andy, sir, Thank great. You. Okay, so let's uh, take the questions now. We'll uh, take the questions from the participants. See, it was uh, thorough analysis of uh, cyber uh, okay. Gauji, and it was, uh, in fact, quite interesting too, maybe mm -hmm. for many, because we haven't thought of such a learning method. Okay. And I would like to add the TPAC I too. I'm sure that uh, you're well versed in TPAC, the technology, content plus uh, pedagogy, which is uh, quite uh, relevant in our days. Our teacher's knowledge of technology, our teacher's knowledge of TPAC model. Yes, Andy, sir, TPAC model, technology plus pedagogy plus content knowledge which would make a teacher fully cyber. Okay, now let's see uh, the questions. I mean, uh, I request yeah. the participants to pose the questions on the chat box and both of our keynote speakers are ready to take up the questions. So if you have questions, yeah, have there are que questions. Uh, I see, uh, question. uh, you can also see, yeah. Saranya, yeah, Saranya, Saranya. Saranya, what was the question, yeah. sir? You can read and... Uh, how learning can be monitor, uh, monitored in education 4.0 as it is a uh, totally uh, learner center. Okay, great. That's okay. the question. So yeah. how, that's a question to uh, Dr. Antti, how learning can be monitored in educational 4.0 as it is yeah. totally learner centered. Okay, okay your thank, you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank uh, you. That's, that, uh, that's the, uh, the awesome uh, question. Thank you so much. Uh, from uh, Saranya, so that easily to control and monitor uh, the student learning or our teaching in uh, through through uh, uh, digital. Let me see uh, how we use, uh, for example, in some university in Indonesia, use uh, LMS LMS Learning Management System. So in LMS, the 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 the, the teacher or lecturer just provide just provide. Uh, the, the the learning material, for example, uh, books, video. Uh, that's quite the same in uh, uh, one of the the uh, the well-known uh, platform uh, course, uh, Coursera. 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 Uh, uh, we 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 uh, the, in that platform uh, they provide a material, video, and a quiz, and also we can show the. Uh, the, the the presentation of uh, how far the student 
uh, the student uh, understand and also the score in every quiz and then assignment that we provide in then uh, in a website. That's that's not the learner center, but we control from the system. I think that's the, just uh, the, the based on my uh, experience in uh, digital control uh, in learning management system. Okay, that's it. Uh, uh, there's a second question, sir. Uh, it's like this. What is the teaching method that can be used in digital teaching? The teaching method. So it's a no, question okay. from Saleh Altham. I think it's from Indonesia. Okay, the question is, how? see, what is the teaching method? What is the best teaching method that can be used in digital teaching? That's the question. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, Dr. Dr. Mawin, put my name. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, I uh, give you uh, the material about how to think and learning process with digital uh, teaching. Uh, you can choose uh, two strategy by uh, using uh, synchronous or uh, asynchronous, and then you can uh, design your learning and teaching material based on the digital. Digital, yeah, digital. Uh, actually. Uh, in this era, this era, uh, you cannot give again for the student by using textbook. Now you must be available all of your materials into the ebook now. So I think this is a, a the good uh, method when you are remote your learning and teaching process in this uh, digital uh, digital uh, teaching uh, process by using asynchronous or asynchronous lms actually this is uh, uh, asynchronous because this is not real time and not uh, not training by using a video it depend depend on your student need on your student uh, condition and what about the teacher condition? When the teacher be familiar with the technology tool by using WhatsApp, you can use uh, WhatsApp to remote your uh, teaching and learning process. And this is come back again to your student need, your student condition, your student uh, level and degree. And then you must design your uh, materials uh, based on the uh, the situation right now. You can improve uh, your materials. Thank you. Okay, so that was uh, an awesome answer. Now I can uh, add. I can what, add. You I can, can add. add. Okay, add. Yeah. Okay, we'll okay. take this after this. We'll just <laughs> only one or two questions maximum. Okay. We'll okay. Thank again. you. Uh, wait, so, wait, wait, yeah. wait. 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 And uh, uh, this actually in learning and teaching process in this uh, digital, you must uh, uh, create your uh, material, create a student to integrate it, their skill and their uh, competence uh, for drama. They write the dialogue and then they speak uh, the dialogue or uh, doing the role play. And the last, uh, what about uh, some assessment tool? Uh, the assessment tool you can use, um, example, uh, quizzes. Uh, this is a plat uh, this platform or application uh, by using quizzes uh, like a game. Uh, this is related to the gamification approach. Oh, thank gamification. You. Okay. Yeah. Gamification. Okay. The last the last response from me, sir. Yeah. 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 Take the questions. I just cover. See, you can okay. you can see it on the <laughs> chat box. So take the questions and answer. But we have yes. just uh, three or four minutes maximum. Oh okay? yes. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, Thank okay. you, sir. Okay. So I just uh, given the additional answer. This okay. is uh, how we use some uh, uh, digital digital platform uh, that's yeah. free and also some some. Nina, ma'am, could you just stop sharing? Stop. Stop no, sharing. I'm sharing. I'm sharing. I'm sharing. You are sharing. sharing. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Miss, Mr. Randy. Okay. Andy, okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. Uh, the question comes from uh, how to uh, how to manage our uh, assessment tool. How to use some assessment tool in our uh, the digital classroom. Okay. So this is this is uh, we start from uh, our need analysis. For example, mm -hmm. in some university, yeah. and then we need to uh, now the student target and learning needs, and then we mm -hmm. come to uh, uh, e-learning or blended learning. That uh, co a combination between uh, uh, face to face and online learning uh, in in LMS or learning management system. Some university have uh, uh, the own uh, uh, learning management system, and some of them are, are use 
uh, some platform like Google Classroom, Edmodo, or uh, uh, Schoology. And then in the process of teaching, uh, we can collaborate. There are many tools in uh, uh, internet uh, through a conference like uh, by using uh, a Zoom like this or WebEx. And then also we can uh, combine with the YouTube, uh, YouTube or, or FB or WhatsApp, Telegram and uh, video tutorial through Camtasia recording, uh, video recorded and so on. And how about uh, assessment or evaluation? Uh, this is just um, uh, a view of a uh, kind of a tool that can uh, that we can use in our uh, assessment or evaluate or e evaluate our uh, 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 our teaching and learning. That is, we have Anatest P4. That's the one of the platform that's free. Or ZipGrid. ZipGrid is a uh, uh, computer uh, paper test. Uh, all Google uh, Google Form and then also Plicker. The plicker like this, the plicker like this. Uh, okay, we, oh. we can, okay. Flip, flip, it's a uh, flip. Flicker. Cards, cards. Ah, cards, right. Cards. Okay. Cards. Cards. okay. Flash and cards, then, sometimes it's called flash okay, cards. Okay, right. Uh, okay, okay, and right. then in, in uh, I think this is the, 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 the screen of the one of the platform. That's almost the same with the system in uh, maybe the own university uh, that, that we have a great book, that we have... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, attendance uh, and also the member and access code. I think uh, quite the same between uh, some uh, platform and then also some uh, university owns uh, about the uh, the the, the e-learning system uh, in their uh, system. Okay, I think. Thank you. Thank you for my response. Okay, that's it. Uh, and uh, I think there's a question from uh, Mr. Uh, Francis. Please share how digital learning can be made an emotionally enriching experience, okay? Yeah, this is very much talked about. So the social, emotional part of learning is often uh, missed in uh, remote learning. So how can, we emotion how can we emotionally enrich the experience uh, in remote learning? That's it, because technology, she, he says, is quite uh, unemotional, okay? So how can we make uh, what they call remote learning teaching or online teaching <laughs> emotional? Okay. Okay, come okay. on. Anyone uh, can take the question. Okay, me, okay. Me person. Uh, oh, okay, is, okay, uh, right. What about the emotion? I think this would be maybe the last question. I don't know. All right. Okay. Come on. Okay. Uh, what about uh, to engage a student emotionally? This is based on the cyber doggy uh, uh, theory uh, from Wang Engkang. You can see in my reference. Um, this is need uh, to uh, uh, a social our uh, social present. You know that we are the human. We need interaction. We need yes. uh, interaction, and and you can ask for the first your student condition. How are you? What about your condition today? Are you healthy? And okay, many, okay, ah, uh, warming up. The, com, uh, uh, effectively uh, communication. Maybe with, something like a warming up activity, right? For five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Just uh, speak on about their haircut, their looks, right? And yeah. uh, make them feel at home, right? Yeah. You okay, smile, okay. smile, smile with your student, giving emoji when you are using a WhatsApp, giving more yeah. a big love, a, a flower. This is uh, engage our emotion, actually. Even though we are using uh, many platforms, uh, okay. but this is only a medium, but you must uh, reach your student a uh, feel, the feeling. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Andy, do you have something to add to it? Andy, unmute yourself. Unmute and then speak. Unmute yourself and speak, Andy. Okay, yeah, okay, come, okay, on. okay. come on. Come okay. on. That's, that's, that's the big problem in this digital uh, age of learning. So, mm -hmm. But uh, we remember that if we just become a teacher that's only transfer our knowledge, there will be a time where you will never again because Google uh, uh, is a smarter and know more than us. Mm -hmm. But however, if we become teacher who also transfer our value, our uh, 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 quality and reason that we'll be always need because Google uh, uh, doesn't have all of it. That's that's yeah. that's how how the uh, how the teacher should always uh, do the face to face uh, uh, and, and then. Uh, flip to uh, uh, online uh, learning in the face to face. Okay, okay. 
yeah thank you uh, good, and good, and good uh, that's good i think uh, nick has an answer nick has uh, typed it out very yeah. well that uh, he's addressing francis sir saying that uh, um, because she's a person who is uh, engaged into webinars maybe uh, 10 or 12 per day nick our first speaker of yesterday has joined this uh, so uh, um, and he has written it in the chat box that's fine since we don't have much time i'm not uh, inviting him to speak but at the same time he has very well uh, typed out in the chat box that uh, i mean uh, face-to-face uh, -face learning has its own advantage. At the same time, uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of opportunities and possibilities for online teaching too. So I think on that note, we'll uh, wind up this discussion. Shall we? Shall we? I mean, uh, wind up. There are questions coming up, but I don't know whether we'll have uh, uh, time uh, to take up all this. Hi, uh, Nick. Uh, thank you for the contribution that you have very well said that uh, digital learning Thanks, can sir. be made emotionally enriching. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Uh, if you want, Hi, you can Prof. speak Nick. for, sir, maybe for just one, one, one minute, not more than that, sir. If you could uh, explain, you can unmute yourself and speak. Nick. Dr. Nick. Professor Nick, yeah. Hi, Prof. Nick. One minute, sir. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Hi great, great. Yeah, that's uh, nice. You look, you look great today, sir. Dr. Come on. Mania and uh, Dr. Azrifan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, tell us. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that um, we have to get used to using technology, yes? Yes. Because from now on, yes, the new normal, as I have already said yesterday, yeah, it will be like a kind of a mixed or blended learning, yes, model. Blended learning. And um, if we master technology, you know, uh, these technological tools and uh, resources, if you get trained, you know, uh, I mean, you, you don't have to pay, yes, for this kind of training, okay? You can also uh, learn it by doing it, you know, and by peer uh, learning, you know? So uh, if we unite all together, yes, all the teachers all around the world, yes, yeah. and we help each other, okay? We support each other, yes? And uh, we learn from mm -hmm. each other, yes? Yeah. We can make it. I'm sure we can uh, make it, yes? So the most important thing, yes, is get trained, yes? Don't be afraid of asking for a helping hand, Yes, uh, your fellow teachers are always there for you, yes, to give you a hand to understand how technology works and uh, how technology can be beneficial for both teachers and students, yeah? Okay, so okay. that's... Uh, that, thank uh, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think uh, thank you, maybe sir. maybe uh, we will. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, delivery from both of you, uh, keynote speakers, Andy and uh, Nina, ma'am. It was wonderful. Thank you, and I think the world will thank you because so many are attending us on Zoom and uh, on YouTube live. So uh, that was a wonderful presentation, and uh, we really liked it because uh, cybergogy is yet to be explored in many parts of the world. Yeah. Because we are quite happy with face-to-face uh, -face teaching methods. And for many, for many teachers, it's so. And as uh, Nick has mentioned, a kind of collaboration. Mm. Collaboration is a must. Team teaching. Team teaching yes. and uh, what do you call collaboration, then networking will help us to be better teachers and uh, very good uh, teachers on cyberspace. So that's something uh, really great. And... Uh, uh, I think we'll move on to the next speaker. And next speaker. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Okay, 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 okay. We are in the so, cyber gogi now. <laughs> uh, we are in the cyber gogi now. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay, okay. That's great. Thank you, Nick. 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 And the topic that he is going to deal with today is English language education and remote learning in the time of pandemic. Okay, we have been discussing that and he'll be adding to what we have said on English language education and remote learning. And of course, he's uh, part of uh, Royal, uh, he's a part-time college professor 
he's a teacher i think he teaches at all levels he teaches at school level he teaches at college level and he's into he's a part time college professor okay a resource speaker and uh, english research coordinator of the center of high school research at the same time okay he was all he has uh, very good networking he's into different uh, professional groups okay it is all written there right and then uh, moreover he is also a professional uh, researcher of educators and uh, i mean uh, he is part of uh, see there are pop ups coming up that's why I, i often find it difficult to read okay i mean uh, and it's all <laughs> there on the screen and he's an outstanding teacher awardee researcher of the year awardee okay then insta bright national awards for educators so many achievements and feats to his credit and he's also a member of the royal institute of educators royal institution singapore so uh, sir uh, it's it's with uh, heart hearty uh, what do you call uh, feelings that i invite you to be our keynote speaker from philippines and uh, over to you so for your uh, session and uh, scare sharing of your screen i'll make you co host sir so that uh, you can do it easily right yes uh good day everyone first i would like to thank of course christ college dr bergis and all the working committees for this opportunity Yes sir. Yes sir. <laughs> We can see your screen. Okay. okay. So today uh, Sir could you uh, play it on the uh, slide show mode full screen? Yes sir, this is already in the full screen. It's not full screen sir. I can see the other slides. you can just play it on yeah yeah make it uh, full screen in the sense put it in slide show slide show or uh, click f5 slide show mode sir it's clear okay sir you can proceed with your presentation if you can yes sir see uh, could you put it in the slide show mode sir yeah that's it thank you sir thank you thank you right now you can proceed with your presentation sir okay oh just again going to the other mode any network problem sir network uh, problem no 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 oh, no now it's okay. fine now it's fine uh, okay, okay start okay. your friend thank you sir okay okay yes yes okay so today i'll be presenting data or information about english language education and remote learning in time of pandemic so do we really need to know or need to stop learning due to the pandemic brought by coronavirus that is the big question that is uh, being answered by everyone okay so people around the world are asking do we really need to continue studying or do we really need to stop education for everyone but come to think of it of course let us start with uh english language education okay so these are the 10 reasons why english is such an important language maybe all of us know this already but of course let us go back and realize how english language education is important for us first of course it's the most commonly spoken language in the world So there are around four four uh, hundred million native speakers all over the world, and English is understood or spoken by around one to one point one point six billion people. Okay, so that is why it is really important to know or to learn. Next, it's the language of the international business. Most world business headquarters are predominantly in the financial hubs of the United Kingdom and United States. so english has long been the default language of trade next or the third one most movies are english 
Hollywood is a powerhouse of global entertainment, so it's natural that English would become the main language for movie making, and thus movies are often dubbed over or subtitled, but they're really best enjoyed in the language in which they are intended. The part one, I hope all of us will agree with this one, it's easy to learn. Uh, it's generally accepted that English is not the most taxing language to get to grips with. The vocabulary is simple to understand and it has developed throughout different languages regarding its evolution. Many speakers of those languages can see where concepts in English originated from and fast adapt to understand the basics of English. Next, it helps you understand other languages. English has a long and fascinating history that spans wars, invasions, and influences from around the globe. Cultures that have helped shape modern English include the Romans, Vikings, and friends, making English a hybrid language comprised of Latin, Germanic, and Romans elements. Six, you can see things in a hundred different ways. One of English's best assets is its flexibility. You can often find many different ways to explain the same things, thanks to its wide range of vocabulary. It is said to have, well, over 750,000 words and is adding new ones every year, as mentioned in the article about the history of English language. Seventh, it can be used around the world. English is also hugely important as an international language and plays an important part in even countries where the UK has historically had little influence. It is learned as the principal foreign language in most schools in Western Europe. It is also an essential part of the curriculum in far-flung places like Japan, South Korea, and increasingly seen as desirable by millions of speakers in China. Okay, which means if you have the basics of English language, you can make yourself understood in nearly every corner of the world. Eight, it's flexible or it's really flexible. Non-native English speakers who learn it as a second language often comment on how many ways there are to say things. That's because English does not discriminate. You can use it however you like. Countries like Singapore have taken this concept to heart, inventing an entirely new type of English called Singlish that has absorbed facets of other languages like Chinese and Malay. It's the language of the internet. Now with the modern world and modern technology, internet is part of the system or part of our personal lives and part of our internal system because most of the content produced on the internet, which is 50% is in English. So knowing English will allow you to access an incredible amount of information, which, not, or which might not be otherwise available in other, other worlds. And it continues to change. Recently, the words selfie, hashtagging, blogging, and other words or unfamiliar words are included in the English language. All these words are not part of the original English language, but have already become valid members of the lexicon. More than any other language, English continues to evolve and absorb new words that branch out, often untranslated into other languages. Every year, approximately more than 1,000 new words are approved and added to the Oxford Dictionary. This tremendous development is the result due to technology, social media, and how people spontaneously coin new words during daily life. So with these reasons, how can we say that we don't need the English language and we should stop learning English? Now, let us get to know the 10 trends and innovation in English language teaching for 2018, according to Chia Swan Chong, so that we will be able to be uh, at least guided on how we can continue our learning, especially with the English language. Of course, all of us are very familiar now 
today's with the term blended learning, which was also discussed by the previous speakers or keynote speakers. Okay, so blended learning as teachers combine digital medium with more traditional forms of teaching, meaning it's, you'll be using technology and of course, the traditional way of using textbook and other materials for learning. Next, we have mobile learning. So mobile or handsets or cell phones are of course part of our lives. So online resources are more accessible with a mobile app or a mobile friendly that then that turns vocabulary learning into a fun competitive game you could play with your friends. It's like essential English, which uses mobile technology to provide free resources for teachers and students, including flashcards, Facebooks, lesson plans, and activities. Next, we have gamification. Of course, using games as part of the learning is really fun, making the learners engage in different activities. So these are appealing to every individual, especially young learners. Next, we have embodied learning. Embodied learning is based on the idea that learning is not just about remembering or memorizing. It involves using the mind and the body, collaborating, discussing, and exploring. Learners need to be emotionally, intellectually, physically, and socially engaged. Next, we have the inquiry-based learning or learning in a complex world. The scenarios that teachers come across in some course materials can seem simplified and unrealistic, leading us to wonder if we are adequately training our learners to real life in the 21st century. That is why the role of the teacher is to at least make sure that the content of their teaching or learning materials are really on the engagement part or will really support the needs of their learners. Next, we have English as a lingua franca. When the concept of English as a lingua franca was first discussed by teachers, academics, writers, and trainers, it was quite controversial. Many refused to consider how the concept of English as an international language might fit into course materials and language teaching. But today, we see resource materials like FrontPack, as an example, taking an unprescriptive approach to accent and instead focus on, focusing on increased intelligibility as the objective, using elements of blended learning and gamification, this pronunciation course doesn't help the learner sound British or American but instead prepares the learner to use English in the global arena. Next, we have multi-literacies and translanguaging. As part of the global world or of the different races and nationalities around the world, we have our own different languages, but taking into consideration that in global communities where English is a common language of communication alongside other languages, Knowledge of other languages is an asset. Rather than diminish the learner's first language or the mother tongue, as we call it in the Philippines, teachers are encouraging learners to use their own languages. This requires complex social and cognitive skills. In contrast, English or strict English only classrooms are slowly becoming a thing of the past. Such linguistic diversity is celebrated in courses like the Family Skills Toolkit that encourages parents and careers or carers of children learning English to see their bilingualism as a benefit. Le supporting learners of specific needs. Now, for every student that we have in this classroom, they have a specific need. So as globalization takes hold, Okay, so we're adapting our international product to match what people want in their particular country or culture becomes necessary. The more we understand individual learners' needs, the more we can tailor our lessons to suit them. Study Legal English, as an example, the world's first legal English podcast includes online learning materials and pieces to gamify learning. Now we have creating and sharing content which there's much online content already out there for learners. 
you just go to our different websites, you, can, you will be able to learn different content and create your own and share it. Okay, so they have created with, uh, with others, just like popular online sites like Quizzes, which was also uh, mentioned by our two keynote speakers a while ago, okay, that create online games and play games that are shared by users from around the world. Okay, and then lastly, we have learning and teaching management platforms. So this is the, or these are the learning management platforms or the LMS like Edmodo, which is increasingly popular uh, nowadays. They give learners an online way to find handouts, continue classroom discussions, and submit homework. Now, online platforms are also used to communicate with parents and other stakeholders, give teachers and administrators an, a better overview of the curriculum, and help manage lesson plans and materials, which of course, is the main function of every educators or teachers around the, around the world. So these tools may appeal because they seem shiny and new, but the true value of innovation lies in how they can really help learners to become better communicators in English and the extent to what they can help teachers encourage learners in the most efficient, motivating ways. Especially this time of pandemic where face-to-face -face interaction is impossible due to the lack of available cure or vaccine or medicine for this kind of virus. Okay, let's go to the second part, which is remote learning. So now we are on the internet or technology-based learning. Everyone is asking how or where do we need to teach or take part in the teaching and learning process, especially those who are teachers or those teachers who would like to at least improve their skills or their craft in using the technology. So there are different types of e-learning. Okay, we have the computer managed learning and the computer assisted instruction. These two are already part of the yesteryears of computer, but still they are being used as form of learning nowadays in e-learning or technology-based learning. So we have the computer managed learning and the computer assisted instruction. Next, we have the synchronous and the asynchronous, which again, these are, when we talk about synchronous, this is an online learning enables groups of students to participate in a learning activity together at the same time. So this is a, a modern way of classroom setup, wherein, of course, instead of the usual face-to-face -face inside the four corner of the classroom. This is another way of having a face-to-face -face instruction using technology. So this is a real-time synchronous online learning of which often involves online chats and video conferencing as these tools allow training participants and instructors to ask and answer questions instantly while being able to communicate with the other participants. While on the other hand, and a synchronous online training or learning is an online learning process, which of course, this group of students study independently at different times and location from each other without real-time communication taking place. So this is for those students or learners which uh, have difficulty in managing their time. So this is the counterpart of synchronous. Next, we have fixed learning or e-learning. Fixed e-learning is a fancy name for something you are likely already familiar with. Of course, when we talk about fixed, in this context means that the content used during the learning process does not change. So it's the original one. So this, this type of e-learning does not consider the needs of the learner. So it's the original method. Adaptive e-learning, so compared to fixed e-learning. This type of e-learning is an innovative type, of course, which really needs to assess and need to address the needs of our students and learners. Linear e-learning, when referring to human-computer interaction, linear communication means that information passes from sender to receiver without exception. But the problem is you cannot send back 
your information. This type of e-learning does not have its place in education, although it's becoming less relevant with time. Sending training materials to students through television and radio programs are classic examples of linear e-learning. So we have now the most relevant or the, the technology that we need to know is about interactive online learning. So from the word itself, interactive e-learning allows senders to become receivers and vice versa, effectively enabling a two-way communication channel between the parties involved. So in here, the teacher can ask and the student can ask and exchange of ideas is present or it's allowed. Now we have individual online learning. Okay, so individual learning in this context refers to the number of students participating in achieving the learning goals rather than the student-centeredness of the material. So this type of learning has been the norm in traditional customs for thousands of years. When practicing individual learning, the students study the learning materials on their own. So that is individually and they are expected to meet their learning goals. While collaborative online learning, which is what we call a modern type of learning method through which multiple students can learn and achieve their learning objective together as a group, which make the learning process easy because each member of the class or the group will be able to at least engage into sharing of different insights and focus on their main objective and altogether obtaining their learning objective or the common learning objective. So these are the, what we call different ways or the e-learning processes that we need to understand that we, that we can apply in our teaching process as teachers or educators. Now, uh, I would just like to give some of the e-learning platforms to use for online courses. Okay, so this can be used by, of course, by big schools looking for platforms in order to provide education or to continue teaching and transmitting knowledge to students. We have Udemy, of course. We have Teach Teachable, Wist IQ, Ruzoko, Educadum, Learn Worlds, Think Epic, then Academy of Mind, Coursecraft, and Skillshare. Now, these are learning platforms where each of us teachers can get into it, which of course these learning platforms provides different materials that we can use in our teaching and learning process. But of course, not all of them are for free. You need to subscribe. Or of course, there's money involved in these different platforms that you can use for online courses, for studying, for personal growth, or you can use this also for your uh, students in schools. And lastly, of course, I have here some popular learning mediums or platforms that we can use in our personal online classes as teachers of different subject areas. Of course, we have Edmodo. Okay, we are, some of us are very familiar with Edmodo. Of course, this is, is an educational technology company offering a communication, collaboration, and coaching platform to K-12 schools and teachers. The Edmodo network enables teachers to share content, distribute quizzes, assignments, and manage communication with students, colleagues, and parents. Of course, we have Kuiper. Kuiper is an education technology company that provides also e-learning, coaching, tutoring, and assessment services for K-12 in Japan, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Mexico. The company's primary service is an online learning management system, which is used in different ways in each country where it operates. Of course, we have Microsoft's Office 365. We can use to create and develop materials and resources for our online teaching. The Google Classroom, or of course, Google Classroom is a free web service developed by Google for schools that aims to simplify creating, distributing, 
and grading assignments. The primary purpose of Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing, sharing files between teachers and students. We also have Flipgrid. This is a website that allows teachers to create grids to facilitate video discussions. Its grid is like a message board where teachers can pose questions called topics and their students can post video responses that appear in a tiled grid display. It is a social learning platform that allows educators to ask a question, then the student respond in a video. Students are then able to respond to one another, creating a web of discussion. Of course, one of the meeting platform that we can use is the Google Meet. Google Meet is a web or a video communication service developed by Google. It is one of the two apps that con constitute the new version of Google Hangouts and the other being the Google Chat. Of course, today we are using this one, the Zoom. Zoom Video com Communications is an American communications technology company headquartered in San Jose, California. It provides video telephony and online chat services through a cloud-based peer-to-peer software platform and is used for teleconferencing, telecommunicating or telecommuting, distance education, and social relations. Zoom is a web page or a web-based video conferencing tool with a local desktop client and a mobile app that allows users to meet online with or without video. Zoom users can choose to record sessions, collaborate on projects, and share annotate on one another's screens, all with one easy to use platform. Next, we have, of course, the most popular one, Facebook. So Facebook's Incorporated is an American social media conglomerate corporation based in Menlo Park in California. So you can create Facebook page, Facebook groups, you can private or can have private or group messages through FB Messenger and a lot more. Aside from this, of course, in other countries, uh, WhatsApp and Skype are very popular. And of course, you can still try to search the internet and be able to at least use whatever is applicable within your reach. Of course, we need to understand or take into consideration our students, our teachers, our location, and budget. That's it. And thank you very much, everyone. Hope you were able to at least gain knowledge or information on how we can really continue to address the needs of our students nowadays in this time of pandemic. Uh, Again, good day. Hi, uh, Chris, it was a wonderful presentation you touched upon. You began with the universality of English language and ended up with uh, a lot of tips for teaching online and also how uh, we, we teachers can uh, approach or use different uh, online platforms and the learning management systems. That is a wonderful presentation. And uh, we'll go to the questions first, and then we'll have, uh, we had a, a, what do you call, a invisible chair for this session that was uh, uh, none other than Dr. Pragash Moti, sir. Okay, he's, uh, he was listening to you. We'll have a winding up, maybe after taking the questions from you. So uh, um, there are a few questions. Uh, one question is this. See, you spoke uh, with the university or uh, introducing the universality of English language. But uh, yes. when uh, one language dominates like this, what would be the fate of other languages? Uh, there's a question because uh, English is used as a lingua franca. It is used as a window on the world for many of us. Okay, yes. and uh, that's why when I made a selection of speakers, we had native speakers, I mean, addressing our, uh, I mean, participants. We had uh, second language uh, speakers addressing and, and also the foreign language speakers. Foreign language speakers too. So we had a combination, our keynote speakers consisted of foreign, I mean, native speakers, foreign language speakers, and also second language speakers. So here, my question to you is, uh, I mean, it's not my question. In fact, uh, a participant has asked the question, 
see when english is dominating like this when english becomes a universal language for everyone what about the fate of other languages could you just comment on that okay so uh we all know that each one of us are or have our own native languages but of course we need to embrace other languages such as english which is of course uh as you have said it's the window to the world but taking into consideration we need to uh, maintain the love for our native languages i'm not saying that we need to forget our native language or our own languages we need to at least improve ourselves as part of being a competent teacher or a being a good teacher we need to be bilingual we need to learn other languages because not only the native of our countries will be our students maybe in the future we'll be having other foreign uh, students learning in our country so it is really a must for us to really embrace two other languages our own language and of course the english language as an international or the window to the world uh, that's true professor kiss uh, what you said is really true see give what is due to our language and give what i mean i'm reminded of a biblical statement okay give what uh, what is due to caesar and what yes. is due to god okay yes. in the same way give importance to uh, the language okay our own mother tongue we, we are we, we are we are born and we speak our mother tongue at the same time let's uh, what do you call let's take english as a window on the world yes. where we communicate with the people in the world so there's there's nothing wrong in that okay give due space for our own language and uh, for english or any other language the world is becoming multilingual each language and we have world englishes now we have yes. world englishes now the term yes. englishes is very much used okay so we have uh, englishes we have uh, american english we have british english we have australian english we have uh, uh, what do you call african english we have indian english we, we also we have, have indonesian english. and philippine english okay <laughs> yes. so uh, english uh, it's the language which is uh, becoming universal and we are not making it universal okay uh, let me see any other question uh, english yeah english is lingua franca or is it a global language uh, the question because english itself is nowadays called i um, mean uh, egl english as a global language yes. esl english as a i mean second language, second language. eil english as a international language mm -hmm. so uh, i mean uh, uh, that's a question i think of course it it shows uh, some of the anxieties of our uh, participants but uh, english is now uh, a lingua franca for all so there is not take it as a lingua franca use it for your own uh, what do you call convenience your own achievements and yes. give due respect to the a language that uh, we are born to that is our mother tongue uh, that's uh, it that's what i think uh, uh, everyone would uh, agree with me when i say that i think yes. uh, you you have something uh, see another one is uh, see as this language education uh, does not take place in uh, language classes alone okay it's not it's incomplete our language I, i think she's typing Ah, uh, Sharon is typing. Okay, as the language education does not take place in language classes alone, right? Um, I think we should integrate language okay, uh, learning and content learning. So, another uh, question is about uh, integrated content-based instruction. Do you have something to comment on content-based instruction, sir? Content-based yes, instruction. Actually, uh, the idea of many teachers is that. only english teachers or english uh, grammar teachers should be the one to teach the proper way of using english but the reality is that all subjects using the english language should also be uh, an english grammar teacher or <laughs> should we say should also integrate what the the topics that we are using as english teachers so it's a matter of integrating or collaborating the english subject or the english topics with other uh, subjects ah uh, that's great that's, that's why great, we are sir, doing because, here in yeah, the country yeah. yeah see you spoke of uh, english as a second language uh, speaker and we have uh, here nick are you there we have a native speaker with us uh, what yes. is his uh, uh, what do you call comments on that 
Hello, Nick. I'm here. Ah, I'm yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. What's your comment on that, Nick? Well, uh, as I have already written, you know, in uh, the you chat. You have written it. Yeah, yeah. In the chat box, it is there. I think uh, in 99% uh, of the cases, uh, lingua franca uh, means uh, global language, you know, because um, English has uh, become, let's say, not only a lingua franca, you know, in many, many countries and nations uh, because of their, uh, let's say, uh, multi-ethnic and multicultural, you know, uh, background. Uh, so uh, it first became like uh, the language of many governments, such as uh, yeah. India, uh, yeah. South Africa, yes, and many other countries, yes, in which too many languages were spoken. You know? yes. So in order for them to, uh, let's say, agree to disagree, they had <laughs> to use a, a common language. And that was English, yes, in many, many countries. In other countries, uh, the language was Spanish. In other countries, the language was Portuguese, yes. And in many other countries, mm. the language was French. Okay, uh, now, French. Uh, I don't think that yeah. uh, English, okay, will be the only language, okay? So I don't think English will become the global language, 100%, the only language, okay, on planet Earth, yes? Okay. That is because uh, I, I, I can see it, you know, from my experience that uh, many, many, many other people, yes, billions of people are learning, yes, and teaching other languages, such as Spanish, French, Italian, German, Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, yes, and so on. So uh, English is a cultural tool. It's an intercultural tool. This language has the power to unite us all, yes? It's a very easy language, yes? Yeah. From the point of view of grammar, English is the easiest language ever, yes? So we do not need languages, uh, yes, uh, coined or invented uh, languages such as conlangs, yes, uh, and so on. We only need English, yes? English is there, English is everywhere. Uh, well, uh, what I wrote in my last uh, PhD, uh, post PhD uh, thesis was this, when Sir George Mallory Sir George Mallory, the most famous climber in 1913, was asked by the journalists of New York Times, why do you want to climb Mount Everest? He answered, because it's there. So why should we all <laughs> learn English? Because <laughs> it's there for okay. everyone and everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it, sir. Thanks. Thanks for the comments. Okay, when a native speaker says that uh, all other languages are going to exist, and let English also exist among one of the languages. And he, uh, um, and Professor Nick is a multilinguist. He knows many languages, so I think his observation can be taken uh, wonderfully. And uh, so I, I got, I mean, uh, feedbacks from the native speaker and also from the second language speakers. We Indians and uh, Philippines are second language speakers. What about you, foreign language speakers like uh, Mutmania and, uh, and uh, I mean, Anti? One of you can respond to it. Maybe in uh, half, a, half a minute. Quick, a foreign language speaker. A foreign language speaker. Okay, come on, quick. Half an hour, half, half a minute. 30 seconds, ma'am, quick. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you are audible. Yes, ma'am, quick. Yeah. Uh, this is when we are talking about uh, okay. uh, English. Uh, we know English is the global language. Uh, and actually the, the position of this uh, language in our country, this is not a second language, but this is still a foreign uh, language. Language, yes. Why? That's why we uh, more uh, need a problem. How to uh, improve our uh, this uh, this language uh, position into the second uh, language in our country? You know, our country is a very large country. There are many uh, 270 million uh, people, and most of them, they are uh, in the village, actually. And uh, this, this, uh, this language is uh, very uh, difficult uh, to apply in our uh, daily activity. It, you know that? Yes. Uh, we have our local local wisdom. When we are uh, communication by using this uh, language, uh, most of our uh, baby boomers generation uh, hmm. refused to us 
uh, they, are, they, 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 they have a feeling uh, a negative to us when we are uh, communicate uh, in daily activity by using this English, uh, the English, uh, the English, and they are a state. Uh, you are not uh, uh, use yet the value of the local wisdom in this uh, in this uh, communication. So uh, we are still uh, fighting how to this uh, language uh, uh, present in the outer uh, school. Actually, uh, in in this uh, in our country, uh, we learn English in English uh, in the uh, senior high school. Uh, senior in, high school okay yeah, senior yeah, high this school. is begin it's begin uh, okay beginning right right uh, yeah. i i think but in uh, india we teach english from uh, lkg onwards I mean, play yeah. school onwards play school okay that's second yeah. language for us for you foreign yeah. language okay yeah. ma'am could you yeah. wind up in half yeah. a minute okay and then and then i mean that uh, we now today we are uh, intercultural uh, during the pandemic yeah. uh, we are in the international uh, in the global communication and we fighting how this language uh, become a, a second language in this uh, in our country. Okay. You know that this is the international and the global. So naturally, it is. Uh, yeah. So let me let me sir, let me, ma'am. It seems uh, in Indonesia. So uh, please mute. Could you just unmute everyone? Okay. This, this is so, so difficult. This is still foreign in our uh, country. Okay, okay. I understand. I understand, ma'am. Yeah. So your position, uh, Indonesian position, was uh, English as a foreign language. Now yeah. it's slowly is it becoming a second language, right? Yeah, yeah. We fight. Yeah, okay. For I understand. I understand, ma'am. <laughs> so that's, thank you, ma'am, for that. And uh, I think uh, we have the chair now, uh, Professor Moti. Professor Prashant Moti is here with us. Uh, so uh, he'll uh, he'll just wind up the session, and after yeah, yeah. this we'll have a short video on our uh, digital partner, that is Oral uh, Systems. Yeah, yeah. After that we'll go on to the presentation. That's all. It didn't okay, play sir. yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would it would be yeah. We have we had it at the end. Okay. We sir. had it at the end. Okay, okay but sir. we'll be playing again because they are our digital partner. They have yeah. come out with a and they are doing wonderful, wonderful job. Yeah, they are doing a wonderful job with the Edu software that they have. So Very I just good. introduced that uh, uh, software. That's all. Okay. So over to you, uh, Prakash. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, one and all. In the day uh, second two. session, day two second. Uh, honorable, pro happen. yeah. Uh, honorable Father Principal Dr. Jolly Andrews, sir, and Dr. K. J. Vargis, sir, and the entire team of the Christ College and dear participants. Let me congratulate the entire team of uh, Christ College, uh, Kerala, for two basic reasons. First, for organizing such a wonderful one-day international webinar. Two days, sir. Two days. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, two days. Tuesday, two days. Yes, uh, it's the second day, right? The second so, day. which is the uh, I think need of an hour in the present globalized uh, COVID-19 situation. And second, for inviting internationally acclaimed. Uh, academicians like uh, Dr. Andrew and Dr. Muthimanan from Indonesia and Professor Trish from uh, Philippines and uh, Professor Nick who is giving uh, scholarly experts remarks on after each and every session. So as far as uh, Professor uh, Chris uh, presentation is concerned, uh, sir has uh, meticulously talked about English uh, literature education and uh, remote learning in the time of uh, pandemic. Uh, sir has elaborately and wonderfully delivered his views about uh, he is uh, fond of 10 things, right? 10 important <laughs> reasons yeah. why we need to study English language. To cite few, it is a flexible language, an international link language, uh, and in India it is a national link language, a language of internet, uh, window to the world, and uh, so on. Uh, then Professor uh, Christ and we are learning English language, not because of the imposition, uh, because Britishers ruled over India, uh, but, but the realization of the fact that it has certain importance. It is the language of, uh, it is a language which gives job opportunities and uh, so on. And it is a language of status as well. Those who are uh, speaking English language, uh, particularly in India, they have, uh, consider they have a kind of a different respect. Anyway, uh, 
then uh, professor chris has uh, given another 10 trends and innovations in elt by uh, chai shang chang as blended uh, learning mobile learning so. glamification embedded learning and sharing content uh, learning and teaching management platforms then sir has thrown light on a very important uh, 10 different uh, types of uh, e-learning uh, like computer management learning, computer instruction learning, synchronous and uh, asynchronous online learning, fixed or adaptive, adaptive e-learning, individual and collaborative on, uh, online learning. Further, uh, Sir has uh, meticulously talked about very significant e-learning platforms to use uh, for online courses and e-learning platforms uh, or mediums, we can say, like Edmodo, uh, Microsoft 365, and in uh, India, it is very popular, Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom, uh, Facebook, and so on. Overall, uh, Sir was analytical, insightful, resourceful, informative, wonderful, and innovative. Uh, we were all pleased and learned a lot from your fruitful and thought-provoking address. Uh, it was a very relevant to the theme of the webinar, we can say. It is an honor and privilege to listen you to sir. We particularly like your latest online platforms, uh, which you have given on the, uh, through your talk. Uh, so this, as uh, it is all because of the one quotation, we can say necessity is the mother of inventions. So during this pandemic uh, period duration, we are all behind online platforms and you have really given us a new platform to explore. So once again, I need to thank Dr. K.J. Varghese, sir, and the entire team of Christ College for giving me an opportunity to chair such an informative and fruitful session. Congratulations to the entire team of uh, Christ College for such a grand event. Thank you, sir. Are you there, Dr. Varghese, sir? I'm here. I'm, I'm yes, here, sir. Yes, yes. I'm very much here. Yeah. Okay. So thanks a lot, sir. Uh, thanks Thank for uh, chairing the session. And uh, we have, uh, and I would ask all the, and uh, Professor Gada was also yesterday's speaker from yeah. Egypt. He was also here. Uh, yeah, are you there, ma'am? Professor Gada. Dr. Gada. Dr. Gada, Dr. Gada, are you there? Because she was there uh, throughout these sessions. I don't know what happened. Okay. So uh, anyway, uh, nice to see all the resource persons, resource keynote speakers uh, yeah. on the, on, I mean, uh, I mean uh, with us online and please do with us, stay with us online because we are going to have some research presentations so that you can also comment on that. Okay. Because, and uh, our presenters will be very grateful to you for your, uh, I mean, wise and intellectual comments on their papers. So mm -hmm. we are Thank going you. to enter the presentation uh, session, presentation session. And before that, We'll be having, we'll be, uh, in fact, uh, going for a video by our digital partner, that is uh, Aurel. So uh, we are just breaking now. In mm -hmm. one minute, we'll have, it's, it's not a break, okay? We, we will have to just uh, set the video of our digital partner, Aurel, because they've come out with a wonderful platform. Because you have mentioned a lot of platforms for uh, yes, yes, yes. learning, but yes. this, is a, this is a different platform that they have with where you can, I mean, incorporate your attendance and almost everything what is needed because what is lacking in one platform will be there in this platform. Okay. And they, 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 they say that it is a complete platform. I'm so thinking we'll, to we'll, have one panel discussion, sir. Okay. To we'll, choose to choose uh, which platform. Which platform. Is <laughs> yes, That's uh, great. Sir. By, by your experts. Uh, uh, okay. Opinion. Yeah. 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 We, we will, we'll have a panel discussion. Maybe, yes, yes. maybe yeah. uh, if possible At to the, the end of the session yes, or sir. on a session entirely different because different. every yes, teacher yes. is now uh, are confused. Which platform yes. they have a platform to take? What are the advantages of different platforms? And uh, most of them are free too. 
most of yes. them are free too so uh, let's see mm -hmm. i mean uh, which platform to choose maybe from uh, people from our uh, teachers and users from different countries will come together for a panel discussion and let them share their uh, what do you call knowledge about these platforms so we are going for uh, this video and soon after that we will uh, enter in our presentations so okay, please sir. stay back online to comment mm -hmm. on uh, the the uh, different papers that are going to be presented so thank you all i mean thank over you. to this video now so uh, okay. can we leave okay okay <laughs> sir yeah yeah don't leave stay back oh. <laughs> don't leave stay back for these sessions okay bye bye okay <laughs> okay, I think, okay i think we can go now Um, Mr. President, Press Prasan Mont Mont Mont. How how to uh, spell your name? Yes, Doctor Prasan uh, yeah. Mote. Mote. Doctor yeah, Prasan Prasan Mote. Okay, Prasan Mote. What is the yes. meaning? <laughs> Prasan means uh, peace, peaceful. Peaceful. And uh, Mote means big one. Ah, uh, uh, actually, my name from uh, Arabic. From the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran, uh, yeah. the meaning is the calm soul. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. <laughs> but, but Mr. Andy uh, laughing. There. I think they are they have played the okay. video, but audio I is think, not there. Yeah. I think this is uh, yesterday. He, she, she, uh, she, she, she did yesterday. We, the Oriel family, are very happy to be a partner of this unique venture. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Anshla Justin, the Business Development Manager at Oriel Techno Systems, India Private Limited. Our company, in fact, is the global leader in education technology solution and pioneers of language lab software in the world, having 5,000 plus customers in 50 plus countries. Here, all the past participants are uh, English instructors, right? So I would like to say a few words about our language lab software. Uh, I will take two minutes uh, to present the futuristic and cloud-based English language lab. Yes, Oriel Talk, a truly new gen by all means. The unique feature of Oriel Talk are it's compatible with cloud, Android, ISO tabs, thin clients and computing etc integrated with the common european framework of reference we have the unique features like parent interface to monitor the students performance principal and managers interface to monitor the teachers activity as well activity based lessons in eight progressive levels instant scoring e exams E modules for easy evaluation, 100 plus comprehensive reports. This product is very useful for students of all levels, right from the preschool or the kindergarten to the professional colleges and at university levels as well. Many of our international schools and major universities in India and around 50 plus countries across the globe are using our product for past 20 years. Now, during the COVID pandemic, we have successfully integrated the live virtual classroom with Aurelia Talk. Teachers can conduct live classes by sharing live video sessions, features like audio sharing, polling options, wide COVID pandemic. We have successfully integrated the live virtual classroom with Aurelia Talk. Teachers can conduct live classes by sharing live video sessions, Features like audio sharing, polling options, whiteboard option, video recording, file upload, etc. We have been incorporated in our live virtual classroom. Dear friends, my allotted time is over. I know that you all are looking forward for more information. Uh, we have shared our browser in the Telegram group. Kindly please go through. Uh, we will send you more details through email. Thank you for listening to me. Please do visit our website, oriel.com. 
for more details. Thank you so much. Dear friends, uh, dear friends, teachers, scholars, there was a presentation on from Aurel, our digital partner for the conference. Okay, they are launching a complete LMS learning management system, and hope we have uh, listened to their uh, executive speaking on that. Now we are going. For our presentations, we have uh, 19 presentations today, and uh, our presenters have sent us. We had uh, over 60 presentations sent, or rather abstracts sent, but we have selected uh, around uh, 40 of them. The problem was uh, the time constraint. How can we have all the presentation? Even people get tired by 18 to 20 presentations a day. Uh, so we have. Uh, have sent this. We had uh, over 60 yeah. presentations sent, or rather abstracts sent, but we have selected uh, around uh, 40 of them. The problem was uh, the time. Echo, echo is coming, sir. Oh, yeah, echo. I, I, I hear the that. There's echo. Get tired by. 18 to 20 presentations a day. So we have, uh, have said this. We had uh, over 60 presentations sent, or rather abstract sent. Second slide. Uh, around uh, 40 of them. The problem was the time. Echo is coming, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that. Presentation. Is echo? We have tired by 18 to 20 presentations a day. First so we time. have. Uh, Okay, so uh, we have uh, this echo. Uh, one second. No, it's fine. Okay, uh, so we are going for the presentations now. The first presenter is uh, Ashwadi MS. And the topic is 
what more can an artist do over a doctor a very interesting topic <laughs> see the topic goes like this what more can an artist do over a doctor okay because these days okay, we uh, give a lot of importance uh, to so we are doctors going for the uh, presentations now presentations now, the yeah first presenter is uh, ashwadi ms and the topic is what more can an artist do over a doctor a very interesting topic <laughs> see the topic goes like this what more can an artist do over a doctor okay because these days we give a lot of importance to doctors Uh, hello can you hear me now okay so uh, we are going for the first presentation by ashwadi right hello adhu video onalla പക്ഷെ ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ ഇത് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു പേപ്പർ ഓൺ ദ ടോപ്പിക് വാട്ട് മോർ ഐ എം എ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് സഹോദയ കോളേജ് കോടകര ഡൂയിങ് മൈ മാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആൻഡ് ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ today i am going to present my paper on the topic what more can an artist do than a doctor we know the fact that medicines are for healing the sick and relieving the suffering so we can see people around us complaining that they are being treated by the doctors as inanimate objects that is they mean that they ha- they are being treated by computerized methods they are not into any conversation they are not uh, spending time with the doctor rather they are in a computerized treatment in this era being patients they not only need physical treatments but they also need the time of doctors to be consummated that is along with physical treatment they also require emotional support from the doctors themselves but let me ask you this is this possible in this era of pandemic and timelessness people are in a busy world they are uh, doing uh, they are kind of very busy doing their own personal stuff that they don't care about other people i would say medicines are all about the physical requires of a patient and it requires scientific knowledge doctors with artistic values seems to be uh, a more ha- having more observational skills and they are more likely to have empathy towards the patients they can uh, relate to the patients their emotions their feelings not just as a uh, fe- uh, feeling kind of sympathy towards them but empathy and sympathy is something totally different from each other we know that to deeply understand the patients doctor must be empathetic towards them not sympathetic when i took this topic the first thing that came up to my mind is the story of short story written by o henry named last leaf in the story we 
we have we all have already read it i am sure about it and we can see that how old behrman his masterpiece has helped john c to survive like she was left by the doctors that they are having no hope in her life and they said even her to accomplish her last wish but what made her leave further was all the behrman's masterpiece artist are someone who uh, reinvent themselves through their artworks and are trained to observe the world with a detailed view from color to line and light to shadow there are some things few things that can't be explained verbally and then here is the artist who makes people understand that uh, understand the things that can't be explained verbally art is a part of our culture it brings people together when class gender caste uh, race uh, extra divide the people this is something that can bring people close to each other in the last leaf by o henry we can see that john c is under, undergoing uh, certain mental uh, isolation and uh, loneliness alienation what uh, we can say um, like we can relate uh, relate that incidents uh, of that story to the present condition of ours that is uh, in these pandemic times uh, we are being we are all quarantined to our, to the four walls of our room obviously it has a psychological effect on humans we know that keeping ourselves away from our loved ones was once a punishment was like a punishment to us but now if we now in this era if we are loving our loved ones we obviously have to keep distance from them social distancing you know these all have a great impact on our mental health this mental health can be only be cured by i mean i should not say only be cured by to a very great extent doctors do this job but as an artist do it without any surgical instruments or medicine he is influencing us through his art uh the artist bahman's masterpiece cannot be considered as just a technical ac- accomplishment uh it actually saved john c from her death the will to leave again or rejuvenate from the depression she had at those times it was this behrman's masterpiece that helped her a lot when a physician maintains the physicality or physical wellness of the patient an artist can obviously take care of the mental welfare of the patients when a doctor can heal the physical bodies of humans an artist can clearly heal the soul of the patients in this era we can see that doctors are like angels saving us from this pandemic likewise in the story of o henry uh, it's just a short story but though it conveys a great message that artist can also give hope to live if we are optimistic about our lives that should continue go on it's something that will help us to rejuvenate into a new soul and live further and at the end of the day we can say that art makes us a better person makes us Uh, a better person by by making us uh, think profoundly by making us feel deeper and by making us act and do something when we feel that nothing can be done mobile reading ka asila now in this world we have art therapy 
in scientific terms but in this session i am not at all deteriorating doctors doctors but i am just saying the role of artist in maintaining the well-being of a human mentally so i am concluding my session by saying that we should actually salute all the artists around here out here and thanks for making our life better and finally thank you everyone for listening to my session and supporting me throughout thank you so much thank you so that was again uh, there was again another paper where uh, literature art as a healer okay and she thanks all the artists for making our life better so if you have questions uh, you can put it in the chat, chat box now you are free to ask questions to the presenter and the presenter i mean are you online yes sir Please? okay uh, that was a nice presentation and you want something to be added to it yes very sir. interesting presentation i see it's again from francis sir very interesting presentation nothing can beat a doctor who is also a physician uh, the renowned ayurveda physician dr varier of uh, kottakkal who was uh, a kadagalli yeah 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 see even doctors are artists that's what he says okay do you want to add something to what you said yes sir you, uh, we all know that old vahmans it's an illusion of leaf printed on the wall and yeah. uh, it made her yeah 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 that uh, or by or henry right lastly yeah yeah, yeah. Right. in that we can see that um, it's because of that illusion john c john c three again mm -hmm. uh, she was able to regain her will to live yes yes and yes. it is something that inspires us to survive in this pandemic era even if the scientific solutions are not yet invented oh, yes yes yes, yes. therefore we can say that art is something that can always provide uh, some kind of inspiration for us to cope up with our physical illness and sometimes can even get our minds get yeah that's off. true yesterday we had a paper i think you were online when uh, uh, i don't exactly remember his name the presenter said that uh, i mean uh, yes srijit Yeah, Sri Ji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, must be your colleague. I, I mean, uh, uh, he's student, my junior. Uh, uh, you, your junior. Okay. I, so, what's happening in Sahirdaya? It seems you people see art. I mean, uh, art and literature as a healer. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Similar presentations. Anyway, uh, that is nice. And uh, yeah, art can do uh, wonders in our lives too. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, with that, I'm moving. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And stay online. We'll take up questions if. Uh, The, the presentation comes to a close in time. Okay, yes, sir. so that I want, I want, I would like to have all the presenters and also our keynote speakers online, so that we had a we have a grand winding up ceremony, a grand valedictory uh, ceremony where uh, um, one of our senior professors will be addressing you. I um, mean, okay. Professor Mary Patros. Right. So here, mm -hmm. uh, next we are moving to the next presentation by Harsha. Harsha is a research scholar. okay and uh, she has titled her paper into paper like this a peep into learning in social distancing among undergraduate students in kerala drishya dilip she is an assistant professor of english at at snm college malingara kerala and she is also a research scholar in sendolosius college uh, elthurut and she is doing her research in elt so uh, we'll go to her presentation now I mean, Drishya. Over to Drishya. for giving me an opportunity for presenting a paper i am working as an assistant professor at asnm college malengara first of all i would like to thank the convener of this two day international conference for giving me an opportunity for presenting a paper thank you sir the title of my paper is a peep into learning in social distancing among undergraduate students in kerala 
As we all know, during this COVID-19 pandemic period, everything has changed. The sphere of education has also changed a lot. And the traditional classroom is replaced by online classrooms by using different high technologies. In Kerala, at school level, the state government is given a provision for uh, mass education programs developed by experts uh, with the use of computers and television. But in higher education sector, curriculum transaction is done at institutional level, mainly with the use of high technologies, that means by using different e-gadgets and uh, with the internet facilities. The present study tries to find out to what extent uh, this online learning or uh, learning with the use of high technologies with, uh, will be successful in a developing country like India. Remote teaching is a type of teaching in which uh, the learner, instructor or some information are separated by time and distance. Therefore, they cannot meet in the they cannot uh, meet in a traditional classroom setting. And here, information is transmitted via technology. Emails, discussion boards, video conferences can be used in remote teaching. And remote teaching occurs synchronously and asynchronously. Synchronous learning is a type of uh, learning uh, which uses an internet mediator technology in real time. And uh, here the teacher will be in one place and the students in another distant place. Different uh, softwares like uh, Google Meet Hangouts, eClass, Zoom, Cisco Webex can be used in synchronous learning. Asynchronous learning is a practice of internet mediated technology by separated by time. LMS and uh, virtual learning environment can be used here. Different forums, lessons, uploaded files can be used uh, in asynchronous learning. Emergency remote teaching is a temporary shift of uh, instructional delivery to an alternate delivery mode due to crisis or circumstances. The primary objective uh, of emergency remote teaching is to provide temporary access to instruction and instructional manner that is quick to set up and reliably uh, available during emergency or crisis. During this COVID-19 pandemic period, information communication technology is widely used in almost all institutions. And information communication technology can contribute to the universal access to education, equity in education and delivery of quality learning and teaching and teachers professional development and more efficient education management, governance and administration. The greatest advantage of ICT on education is that it facilitates video conferencing or other form of teleconferencing to involve wide range of students from distant geographic areas. ICT in education also allows for new ways of learning for students and teachers like e-learning. E-learning is a type of learning that utilizes electronic technologies to educational curriculum outside of a traditional classroom. During this COVID-19 pandemic period, e-learning is uh, e-learning became popular and it is it has been widely used uh, in almost all institutions. And the present study aims to find out to what extent it will be successful. Uh, so learning in, a, learning in social distancing will be successful uh, in a developing country like India. As a, the survey method was used for the study and the questionnaire was used as the tool for the study and mean uh, was used uh, as the statistical tool for the study and the sample of 60 students from Mizuna College Malingra was taken uh, for the study. And through the interpretation of the data, that means uh, from the data that we collected through the 
questionnaire, it is clear that 88% of the total sample of students belong to rural area. And 86% of the students felt that face-to-face -face communication is better and effective than online learning. 72% of the students responded that the availability of broadband is almost neglected in rural area. 66% of the students responded that online learning helps to develop 21st century digital skills. 55.8% of the students is of the opinion that affective domain is neglected in online learning. So from this uh, it is clear that uh, the availability of uh, broadband is almost negligible in rural area and the parents or the students could not afford to spend 200 or 300 per month for internet facility. For them it is a luxury than as a necessity and high technology has no human touch and they prefer from the study it is clear that uh, they prefer, most of the students prefer WhatsApp as a platform uh, for learning rather than any software. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Drishya. And uh, are you online? We are muting. Yes, sir. Because, ah, you yes, are sir, online. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> great. And first of all, see, uh, since you did it, in, uh, did it on mobile, see the mm -hmm. slides were not clear. Okay, yeah, sir. <laughs> I, I'm, for me it was not clear where I'm, I'm sitting on our desktop, then what about uh -huh. people who are on mobile? Okay, anyway, I um, mean, mm -hmm. do you have something to add to it? Ah, I think, uh, Sharon, yeah, okay, I mean, I have a, I have a question. See, <laughs> are you for technology or are you against technology? Uh, I think for technology, but okay. with the help of the teacher. Uh, a technology never replaces the teacher okay. and the, the success of any technology uh, depends or rests within the hands of the teacher. Yes. Uh, it is the teacher who knows well uh, which platform or uh, which technique has to be used for uh, his or her students. That's also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you, you often prefer a kind of blended learning. See, it said that I mean, uh, technology can never replace teachers. So yes. naturally, but uh, there's a saying often uh, uh, teachers who know technology may replace teachers who don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, uh, be, uh, let the teachers be better equipped so that uh, they can, uh, what do you call, uh, deal with the times. It, of course, mm -hmm. it's a challenging times for teachers and also for students. I don't know how many, though yeah. they are natives, how many, I don't know how many of them are uh, really into this guy. They, they use these gadgets for all kinds of, uh, what do you call other yes. business, like yes, for sir, gaming, yes, uh, for chatting, but uh, they, they are also not that familiar with uh, learning through technology. So we, uh, <laughs> yes. the, the students should be trained and also the, and let me see whether there are uh, any questions here. Okay, if, if at all there are questions, I think we will uh, take up uh, at the end, Adrishya. So thank you okay, very much. Sir, sir. Thank uh, you, thank we, you, sir. We are, we are, we are going to the ne uh, next presentation. And it is by Harsha, Harsha K. Uh, she's a guest lecturer in the Department of English, MES KVM College, Valancheri. And she's also an aspiring, uh, I mean, research scholar. As a research scholar, maybe in uh, maybe in uh, one or two months, she'll be a research scholar, right? So uh, uh, let's uh, go to her presentation now. And her presentation is on uh, digital narratives as postmodern self depictions. Over to Harsha. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Narrators, digital narrators. Hello, everyone. 
uh, wishing you a very good day i am harsha i am here to share uh, some uh, ideas about digital narrators digital narrators uh, how they are influential and how they are testimonial to represent our present scenario that is our postmodern present scenario that is my topic is digital narratives as postmodern self depictions then digital narratives uh, they are uh, personalized narrations uh, through digital media they are individual and personalized narrations they are individual and also they are personalized and they are also self reflexive in nature that is uh, they are of uh, they are self reflexive in nature at the same time they are of much influence to the individual lives of the of our time and also of the collective lives of the people uh, in our present world then uh, digital narrators how they are replacing uh, our traditional method of narration or, or our traditional narrative methods are uh, now it has totally changed uh, in digital world and that is the, our digital narratives are replay uh, they are replacing our traditional grand narratives Uh, we know that uh, our past were always uh, referred or they are marked by great narrator narration narr- 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 and also of great narrators and uh, now it has all changed and uh, it is the time of uh, digital uh, small digital narrations they are universal they are uh, individual uh, they are universal and also individual and also they are of uh, of unique characteristics and these narrations uh, they are um, in all together they make uh, the picture of our times then uh, digital narrators are uh, uh, characteristic mean characteristics of digital narrators they are of uh, uh, post traumatic in character that is they are of linear in exp- expression and also uh, they are of fragmentary in nature uh, they are, are linear in its uh, expre- expressions and uh, they are fragmented in its nature and Uh, they are post dramatic as they are intended more to make the effect rather than uh, uh, the uh, how the text uh, uh, text was conveys or uh, the textual experience of the reader there is also uh, there is a multiplicity of expression in our digital narr- narrations and there is a multiplicity of expression and also there is a, uh, they are of more interactive in character And that is when compared to our traditional uh, narrative methods they are more interactive and uh, the reader they are acknowledging uh, the fact that the reader is not at all uh, uh, different or the, the reader can't be de- separated from what is readable or what uh, from what he is reading then Uh, digital narrators to a uh, to a reader digital narrators are uh, giving certain uh, advantages or certain opportunities these are uh, they uh, there is a uh, uh, there is an opportunity to reread and uh, revisit what he has already uh, have done or um, they uh, give the they never curtail the freedom of the reader um, or the receiver to reread or the re- uh, or to revisit that text that is each reading uh, uh, digital narrator says that each readings are different and each readings are uh, new experiences to the recipient and they are a very fluid in nature and that is their fluid character uh, and their fluid nature uh, give uh, new experiences and each reading is uh, makes a different experience to the reader there is no fixity in space and time that is uh, each reading can and be uh, attributed to different spatial and uh, time uh, spans that uh, it gives a different experience to the reader and uh, there is also 
ऑल there is also there is no fixity uh, in digital narratives uh, or uh, in the matters such as how to read the text and how to experience that uh, and uh, the reader is free to uh, to read the text uh, and in uh, the manner that he chooses and also uh, to experience the text in the uh, in in the way he wanted and also uh, uh, this characteristic make uh, digital narratives to uh, show that all writings are different and at the same time each readings are, is are always each readings are always different and at the same time uh, they are digital and also they are all network they are universal uh, in and they are uh, ever present they are digital and they are network at the same time uh, they uh, intensified the fact that all writings are different and also uh, all uh, each readings were also different then uh, that is we can conclude that uh, digital narratives are testimonies of postmodern tradition and they are personal yet ever present and they are network yet fragmented and individual yet collective in nature uh, they are uh, postmodern in its tradition that is they are personal and yet they are also ever present and they are uh, network and also uh, they are fragmented they are individual uh, uh, yet they are collective in nature thank you okay harsha again uh, that was a very short presentation uh, short and sweet i should say and uh, harsha are you online yes i am here yeah. you are there right uh, so uh, let me see whether there are any questions uh, uh, do you want something to add to it what you said nothing more sir nothing more so we have uh, uh, see there are uh, please uh, could you have suggestions about refugee literature okay see there are a few questions on refugee literature i think i'll i'll have to invite uh, maybe towards the end i'll invite uh, nick himself to speak on uh, refugee literature etc um okay harsha if if you have nothing more to say i think we'll go to the next presenter okay okay harsha thank you thank you okay sir. it was a nice presentation thank you right yes so uh, our next presenter is henki and uh, rekna okay and he's going to speak on effectiveness of the immersion model to improve communicative competence on students majoring in english of indonesian so he's from indonesia henki uh, okay my colleagues my friends sir pardon pardon my friend ah your friend oh that's great that's great sir that's great yes sir okay. yes sir i'm ah. here sir yes. yeah, yeah 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 okay so we will go for the presentation and then we'll take up questions okay and um, he is uh, in the english uh, letters department of indonesia muslim university at uh, makassar okay and uh, mpd in makassar state university he's a government lecturer of uh, corpus is nine in indonesia and being employed at kalinatan uh, islamic university since 2005 okay and he he heads the language laboratory there that's great sir again okay so uh, over to henki and uh, rekna for the presentation okay so uh, we'll uh, play the presentation sir now okay uh, wait mm. So sir uh, this is not using the video or directly by No no it is it's a video sir you have sent the video right 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 naturally naturally we will be uh, playing from that and then you can uh, take up the question sir okay right thank okay, you this is a practice that we have okay uh, it, it, it was to avoid uh, in fact i mean uh, technological glitches because uh, often what happens is uh, uh, yeah much for this nice thing
Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say thank you very much for this nice time given to me to present my article. But before, let me introduce my name. I'm Anki, and my my partner is uh, Mrs. Ratna. We are from Islamic University of Kalimantan, Indonesia. So our article here, the title is The Effectiveness of the Immersion Model to Improve Communicative Competence of Student Majoring in English of Islamic University of Kalimantan, Indonesia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, uh, oh, the, the point of this article is a uh, talk about immersion model and also the communicative campus. The immersion model uh, gives the solutions of teaching learning in Indonesia to improve the students, to improve the students' communicative competence. Why something like this? Because the 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 satisfaction of the students uh, of the of the parents and also the, the teachers themselves uh, really uh, so as uh, the, the serious one. So because why the result of the teaching English achievement are still low when we would like to compare the neighboring country like Singapore, Philippines, as a neighboring country. So, uh, any progressing of the teaching and learning English in Indonesia right now, because, uh, the teachers and also the lecturers are providing the, 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 the new technique and also model how to teach it. How to teach it. How, how. So, this is and the immersion model. Uh, immersion model sometimes called English village or also English community in English. But that is according to the result of the research, uh, Henki, Javu, and Sahidya. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, what is uh, that we are going to know here why the learning strategy is important. And what, or why the model is important? Of course, providing strong, positive motivations to students in language learning uh, using good and correct strategy will provide a beneficial cognitive understanding. Uh, this is according to Donning and Donning in seventy-nine. Uh, so, how about the types of speaking activity? I was speaking activities here, of course, focusing to improve or progress the, the, the students' vocabulary. So how to build a new vocabulary students and how about the correct pronunciation and other aspects of speaking like uh, fluency and also accuracy still focusing also in this thing by using uh, Well, next. Immersive model, uh, so many, many people say that uh, it's effective to teach the students whether in second language, then a uh, second, second language or third language. This is immersive model, actually, is a, uh, what is a language is learned through natural communications and by living life in the language. In the immersive model, uh, activities are culturally related to the language. Okay, uh, so how about this article? How about this research? Because this research we call experimental research. Experimental research. So when we talk about the kinds of experimental research, uh, so many, so many design. So one design that we we chose this article of this research. Uh, basically, yeah, it is a uh, one group pretest and post. So in, in counting, of course, I'm going to use big sample. So of course, 
focus for pretest and also uh, what is a treatment uh, and post test. So here, after giving pretest, the student are going to give the treatment in certain time and also in special case for, for finding the result of the students in, in joining the program by immersion model. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, immersion model and a communicative competence achievement of the students we are going to see before and after the activity. So, uh, this is the populations because the accessible populations is uh, there are 250 English major students in Islam in the city of Kalimantan, uh, Banjarmasin, Indonesia. So the sample of the students they are going to spend the time for couple of the week. There are 45 students, English major students. They are going to train. Uh, they are going to have uh, upgrading in teaching English from morning to the middle of the night. So they are taken by random sampling. Okay, uh, test here, uh, the re procedure of data analysis as, uh, as we, uh, we, we, we explained just now, take some pretty test to see the result. Well, ladies and gentlemen, because when we are talking about experimental design, so are going to find the t-test to see this is effective or not effective. So by seeing the, the point of the t-test here, so as there are, uh, what is a uh, 26.350 or vibe zero, uh, this is the, the, the score of the t-test. So, uh, what is oh. okay, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. The result finding are going to compare the score of pretest and post-test from the mean score for the mean score 73 of the pretest and mean score of post-test is a 85. So of course from here we are going to see the differences point. And also uh, this data are going to talk about it. Uh, there is a quite uh, differences talking about the hypothesis. There are no hypothesis, of course, rejected. They say that the post test, yeah, the post test of the students uh, is no higher than the pre test. So, of course, the no hypothesis rejected. But the, alter the alternative hypothesis say that the post test are going to be higher than the pre test of the given the treatment. So, this is a really real that any uh, any significant uh, what is a changing of the students before and after giving the treatment by using the Well, ladies and gentlemen, conclusions of course of the uh, immersion model in teaching or learning activity uh, give the effectiveness, give the the effective the effective. Achievement. So we are going to recommend that in teaching English whether the students from university or, uh, or junior or high school is it also a pay for giving the teaching and learning process by giving uh, by giving this lesson. That's all. Thank you for your kind. Of Hi. Thank you, sir. That was a fully researched paper, sir. Okay, uh, fully researched paper, I mean, uh, of uh, very high standard. So, uh, so, so, um, if there are questions, I think we'll, uh, do you want to add to, add something to it, sir? You are unmuted, sir. Unmuted. Uh, yes. Ah. Yeah, uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, because... So uh, time is quite limited because time just given for eight minutes to speak on the video. 
So actually, yes. uh, when we talk of, of immersion model, of course, mm -hmm. this is the, the model from French and also American, America. So yes. uh, the, this model, because uh, this is a nice, uh, nice, uh, what is a nice model? So we come to uh, uh, in Indonesia in order that the students also can increase their ability or they can love English English teaching or English yeah. uh, English subject. So Indonesian people are really like or students or Indonesian people really like the program something like this. Okay. So after doing the the many times treatment, so we can say that the immersion model that from French is quite uh, is a is a what is a it's nice to adapt it in other countries like Indonesian country. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know whether I mean okay. any of our uh, I mean, keynote speakers no. need to. I mean, uh, um, Nick, uh, do you want to comment on that? Because you have you have been uh, giving a lot uh, in the yes. chat box. Uh, <laughs> just comment on that, sir. Again, for one minute. Okay, we don't have much time. That's why. Sorry for that. So uh, yeah, just um, comment on that. Um, yeah, I would, I would I would really like to answer Francis, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to tell him that in the United States, yeah, um, there has always been a literature, okay, on uh, black, you know, and uh, racial and segregation, you know, and di uh, racial discrimination. No, so uh, we have always tried as teachers, yes, to teach our students uh, inclusion, yes. And um, we do care about our refugees, yes. We are not with uh, our president, uh, Trump, who's a kind of a crazy guy, <laughs> okay. yes. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, and um, we, we, are not, we are not building walls. Uh, yes. We uh, teach uh, our refugees even in the underground, yes. Okay. So in special locations, yes, mm -hmm. as seen in movies, yeah. And we do really care about their education, their inclusion, and their becoming a person, a real okay. person, not okay. just a name, not just a number, not just, <laughs> you know, uh, a face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, the most important thing is uh, that we have to try to teach our students, yes, um, how to uh, respect all the others, yes, because uh, variety is the spice of life. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for that answer, sir, because, uh, because we needed a bit more clarification on that. And let me go to Hengi again. See, there's a question from Sharanya Narayanan, and it goes like this. Uh, could you elaborate on uh, shadow of speech as a tool? Shadow of speech as a tool. Uh, Mr. Hengi, Dr. Hengi? Yes. You there? Yeah, yeah. Shadow of speech as yeah. a tool. Oh, oh. See, uh, we, are, we see you and your... Uh, Somebody else also with you? Somebody else? Okay. Yeah, you, Mrs. Ratna here also. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. great. That's great. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Ah. Um, so if we are talking about immersion, I, I think that no, uh, nothing to worry about that. Yeah, because on this um, uh, program, um, uh, all all participants have the same work. Right? We don't we see that they are from. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. So they have the same right. We don't, we we have to see that they or they are from uh, this kind of tribe, this kind of religion. You know, okay. They all of them are here. All of them uh, have the same right. So uh, as uh, Dr. Henry said just now that uh, this uh, model is a very effective to increase uh, not only for the student speaking skill but also for the other skills like. Um, okay. our listening and their pronunciation and also for their socialization. There is no gap between one student to the other students here, sir. So uh, I think that there's nothing to worry about uh, to, to apply this um, uh, this model. Okay. And it seems uh, Nick says uh, we'll have to understand the meaning of the term global uh, citizen. Okay, uh, ma'am, uh, you, you are yes. a co-author. Let me ask you this question. Could you just elaborate on uh, shadow of speech as a tool? Sh so you have mentioned in your presentation shadow of speech as a tool uh, in uh, teaching. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Shadow of speech as a tool. Uh uh Yes, I'm so sorry, sir. Could you please? Um... I repeat the question. Okay. Oh, okay. Shadow, See, the question shadow. is there in the chat box. It's by okay. it's from uh, Sharanya Narayanan, and she asks, 
could you elaborate could you explain on sh shadow of speech as a tool you said you suggested shadow of speech as a tool a tool and a tool for teaching could you explain that the term shadow of speech am i not communicating when i say shadow of speech you have mentioned it in your presentation shadow of speech as a tool okay um, I, <laughs> yes it's quite hard to understand about this word a uh, shadow of speech as a tool means um Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I'm so sorry, sir. Well, we. Uh, It's in the chat box. Maybe we take up that question later, ma'am. If time yes, permits, sir. we'll take up that question later. Okay. Now okay, we are. Okay. 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 okay so thank sir. you very yeah, much. Thank you so thank much. You. We will respond on uh, yeah, yeah. chat box. Thank please, you so much, please, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. Please uh, uh, stay online. Okay. That was a okay. wonderful. I um, mean, a fully researched presentation. Uh, thanks a lot. And we are moving moving on to the next presenter now. We are moving to the next person. It is Hima Hari. Okay. Okay, sir. Hima thank Hari. you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hima Hari is the next person. So naturally, uh, she is speaking on barriers to online language learning. Barriers to online language learning. So let's go to her presentation now. That is to Ahari. I am working at Carmel College, Mala. This is my second online presentation. I would like to present my topic: barriers to online language learning. The English language is considered as the second language in India. The mastery of English language is not an easy process. It needs an essential understanding of four skills of a language: listening. Speaking, reading, and writing are basic skills of a language. A person's inability to communicate in a proper way is regarded as a language barrier. These barriers are absolutely led a person to misunderstand and miscalculate ideas, actions, and knowledge. The online classes are not easier than the classes offered in the traditional classroom. The online classes require more self-motivation. This learning can be a hard task for the learners. They have to face technical glitches and content queries during these classes. Online language learning barriers prevent free and spontaneous overflow of information and news. The understanding of these four skills of a language enable a person to communicate language with fruitfully. Thus, this study tends to focus on the understanding of listening barriers, speaking barriers, reading barriers, and writing barriers. Listening barrier. Listening is a skill of understanding the vocal sounds and messages produced by the speaker. Hearing impairments is the main reason behind the breaking of information. Many students are apted to pay attention in the classes. This may be a threatening for online teaching and learning process. Listening barriers disturb the proper development of listening skills. The second skill is speaking skill. Speaking is the productive skill of a language. Fear, lack of confidence, unclear sounds and pronunciations are some speaking barriers of language learning process in India. students are facing many physical impediments for learning language reading barrier reading skill is a skill of comprehending graphic or written words of language english reading skill is also a complex skill the ability to make out the story of the chapters identification of the word and sentence is considered as the sub skills of a reading skill These key skills are not easy to practice through the online classes. Reading barrier is a barrier which affects the comprehension of written language. Writing skill is a spontaneous activity. 
in online classes we have to face time and technology limitations a student cannot connect his ideas with past experiences here teacher cannot provide proper motivations through online classes this may affect the psychological aspects of the learners poor parents cannot afford to create a smooth environment for their children regularly these suffering situations are emerging in india now in an online communication process teachers are communicating with students with digital platform the language communication can promote listening and reading for the understanding of the content it can promote speaking and writing skills for the production and involvement of the good communication thus listening barriers speaking barriers reading barriers and writing barriers are ob obviously regarded as the obstacles of online language learning process thank you thank you very much oh so thank you uh, hima for that uh, short presentation uh, it was a nice one regarding the barriers in uh, language learning okay hope you are there online okay okay sir could okay, you hear uh, me sir yeah 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 i can hear you okay. well uh, i mean do uh, you want to add something to it hima okay sure sir uh, my topic is uh, mainly discussing about the barriers of online language learning yes. uh, because i think classroom interaction play a significant role in our teaching and learning process the responses of students are more important in the proper fulfillment of our classroom communication yes so in on online classes we are facing many issues like technical problems hearing loss and lack of clarity etc mm -hmm. so automatically this may be create troubles in classroom teaching and learning environment okay uh, so students will not get any proper satisfaction for their subject queries okay uh, thus these barriers are absolutely regarded as the challenges of uh, new classroom communication Okay. Uh, so thank you, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, right. I think uh, if at all questions come up, we will be uh, uh, discussing it at the end if time permits. Okay. So okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And we are going to the next presenter now, and it is uh, Dr. Iram Fatima, Assistant Professor, Ramanujan University of Delhi. Okay. And she is going to speak on disruption in non-verbal communication during. online teaching and uh, she is at present an assistant professor of this university and she has done her ma in english and doctorate is again in english from university of lucknow so uh, let's uh, listen to her next dr iram fatima
he hosts uh, host that's i it. cannot do that i cannot do that i'm not allowed to click on uh, make host why why you can click you can click on that click really on me uh, click on me as a host a problem which we haven't never faced before okay one second one yeah. second select me dr vergis and uh, then click no i cannot do that i can only have i, I only have two options yeah. yes yeah, the options the... are the options are chat or pin video no you will have a uh, option to make me host sir no i don't have it co-host no i don't have it uh, i'm already host they say that's fine then i think we can go to uh, playing the video now okay I'll yes yes to the next presentation yes okay we'll we'll go to the next presentation now yeah be back with you in about half an hour yeah okay okay thank you thank By you time i'll make uh, my uh, colleague co-host uh, i'm uh, it was all because of this uh, technological glitch yes yes of course ah uh, yeah and it happens at any time i cannot see shindo here yeah okay fine and you are co-host shindo now okay right so we are back again after the coffee break as i said in the telegram group so we are back again and uh, we are going to play the next video which was uh, dr iram's video iram fatima's video which we uh, uh, which we had to yes uh, stop in between i think i have a video with me okay i'm so dr iram again Shindo, one minute. You tell me what to do. Then the chain thing is going to come. No, no, that's already I screen sharing. Yes. Comes like this. Is on the mall. Like I can. Ah. Playing. Sound, sound. What? Ah. No, no, I don't. Is it close? Is it close? This close, close this, close it all. Okay. In 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 the other place, a double click. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. But I mean, no, no, share it. No. Ah. No, no, it's not shared. A share it, but it's not there. I'm very simple. Ah, okay, okay, yes. No, 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 not that, not that, not that. Ah, I, I'll do, I'll do. Yes, yes. Share, 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 share. Is the need for survival is need for existence, and it is mandatory. Like 
air and water in our life because without communication we cannot survive because we need to deliver our thoughts we need to deliver our message to the other person and we communicate with our friends family relatives colleagues employees and with many people we may know very well and even with perfect strangers and it is only through communication that we fulfill our different needs whether they are personal emotional psychological educational social financial professional or cultural so according to keith davies a well known author communication is a transfer of information and understanding from one person to another it is a way of reaching others with facts ideas thoughts and values and communication is a process of transferring information from one entity to another to another and communication is commonly defined as the imparting or exchange of thoughts opinions or information by speech writing or signs but there are two types of communication verbal communication and non verbal communication under verbal communication which is expressed through words verbal communication is the communication which takes place with the help of words and it may take place orally or in written form then come to non verbal communication which constitutes a very important part a very important element of communication and without it actually the communication process is incomplete and uh, as we have seen that during covid-19 everything had to stop but only teaching has to take place and teaching will go on so and we taught by our different online modes and while communicating online what i found is that verbal communication was possible very much but because i was like speaking to words and the students were asking question through words by speaking or by typing in the chat box available in that particular app but non verbal communication was possible there was disruption in non verbal communication there were many times when i was not sure that whether the students have understood whatever i have taught them or not because i could not see i could not understand their gesture their posture it was very difficult for me for all the teaching fraternity to comprehend the non verbal communication by teaching online so the very first element of non 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 verbal communication is kinesics so it is study of body physical movement it says about personal appearance posture gesture facial expressions and eye contact as i already mentioned that uh we were unable to know or see the gesture the facial expressions of these students and the eye contact was also missing because and due to this we we were unaware that whether the student has understood whatever we have taught or not then there was proximics it also comes under non verbal communication and it means space or lack of it between sender and the receiver of the message also speaks for and it consists of four spaces intimate personal social space and public and due to online teaching this proximics was also missing then coming to chronics which is a study of the use of time to communicate so 
prolemics constitutes very important element of communication, but it was badly disrupted, I must say, during online teaching because there were several network issues, connectivity issues, that the student couldn't connect on time, the student couldn't join the class on time. And chronomics also speaks volumes about the, the person, about the concerned person. But this thing was also missing during online teaching when we were interacting. Many a times the connection used to break down and the students used to rejoin again. So all these things, all these concepts were very helpful in communication during online class, during uh, classroom teaching, but in online teaching it was missing. Now coming to haptics. So when we communicate with our sense of touch, it is known as haptic. Many students, when students, many times when students used to give a correct answer, we used to simply give a pat on their back or to tell them that yes, you are right. But in uh, online teaching, it was all missing. Haptics was also missing. Then para language, para language. Uh, it is a way how meaning is conveyed by how we say things while speaking. It is, it does not concern with what we say but how we say. It was also missing due to network problem. Many times I had to speak a lot, several times the same statement. So the essence of my message used to get lost in the middle room. So. And these were because of the barriers that used to hamper the flow of communication. Firstly, the physical noise. There were some network issues. There were some connectivity issues. And secondly, the psychological noise. The students were sometimes least interested in taking online classes. It appeared to them very boring. So, all these things are very as communication uh, it, it is complete only when there is perfect balance between verbal and non-verbal communication but yes there was a disruption in non-verbal communication during online teaching thank you hello 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 ma'am, it was a good presentation and we all enjoyed it. Now, uh, let me see whether there are any questions. Hello ma'am, are you online? Hello ma'am, are you online now? We have unmuted you ma'am. Hello. Yes, uh, come on, uh, just respond to my, see, are you online? Because I can't hear you, ma'am. We'll unmute you then, okay. See, you are unmuted, ma'am, speak. Hello? I can't hear you, ma'am. Are you saying, are you saying something? Or say something? <laughs> okay, so that I can... Yeah, network problem, maybe network problem, ma'am, okay. So I think uh, that was a good presentation. And when you are uh, okay with your network, uh, we will take the question. Uh, so we uh, pass on to the next, uh, okay, 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 okay. I mean, I can see here, see your message. It's okay. So we go on to the next presentation. And the next presentation is by Mariam Nancy J. She's a PhD scholar. And she's going to speak on metaphors of the pandemic, an analysis of select online news narratives in creating Mendel spaces. Uh -huh. That's nice. So I'm, uh, and she's currently doing her uh, PhD. Right. So uh, we, we, we move on to her presentation. Okay. 
right good morning everybody so are you able to hear me yeah yeah you yeah, i mean uh, yeah it's it's mariam who is it mariam nancy okay okay mariam nancy you can wait your presentation will be done and then you can take our uh, questions okay so uh, uh, wait for the presentation okay. now wait, yeah, wait okay. for your presentation okay okay okay, okay. there is a breach in the everyday narrative due to an unprecedented event in our cases it is a coronavirus pandemic according to brian boyd stories or narratives are used to survive we use narratives in two ways to survive first we use narratives to know about the pandemic second we use the narratives to know how to combat a particular situation or in our, in our case the pandemic so often we resort to news articles to renovate our collapsed narratives the purpose of undertaking this study is based on the nature of the news articles all of us know that the eastern countries especially countries like taiwan japan india have proved to be victorious in controlling the pandemic or at least till the when this article was published in may but that is not the same condition with the west where they have miserably failed however the west tries to fit us into a stereotype of death and disease irrespective of the actual facts the news article taken here is from the atlantic which was published in may 13th in 2020 and uh, atlantic is one of the uh, online news sites a very famous online news sites in the us which has a maximum number of uh, subscribers so this news article is about uh, the slum of dharavi in mumbai so the methodology which is employed here is discourse analysis and the three space the three space model in analyzing mental spaces so according to the three space model a news narrative it consists of three spaces first it is a reality space second it is a news narrative space and the third is the intermediate space the reality space gives the information about the present scenario it informs the people about what happened during the event the news narrative space is used to engage or it is used to grab the attention of the audience by including details of uh, the poverty of by including the details which the readers actually require the intermediate space is a convincing space where the two spaces merge and the readers are convinced of what the journalist offers irrespective of the facts this is a thousand word article and it is uh, about the dharavi slums they have taken specific case studies and according to the who during this time especially during may 11 to 13 india was considered to be one of the countries having the potential to curb such a pandemic and it is unwanted to uh, to uh, project such an event so the journalist here has uh, they gone to the slums of dharavi and uh, he has actually interviewed the people or the inhabitants of that place during the same time the government had issued enough food food supplies medical supplies and had quarantined most of the people who were uh, in that slum who showed uh, symptoms of the covid pandemic and who had also declared india to be a potential country for curbing pandemic so when we go into the news article article and when we actually use this three space model the real there was almost 75% of the news narrative space and the intermediate space and 25% of the reality space and even in the reality space the facts and figures were very much less and when we consider the metaphors 
out of the 500 words which were used to uh, to con uh, in order to construct this reality i'm sorry in order to construct this news narrative space out of the 500 words there were 150 metaphors which were very much crude and which again and again reinsisted on uh, putting down the indian scenario so this is just one case here therefore in creating a mental space let me tell you about how a mental space works a mental space primarily works through everyday discourse a mental space is created in the mind uh, through language and through the discourse which are created in everyday lives in the work the metaphors we live by by george lakoff and mark turner metaphor a, a detailed study on metaphors were undertaken according to them the more metaphors we use every day the more the language will be anchored in our brains and when the lang- our language gets a better language so does the ideas so when in the case of such metaphors in the where when i saw in the case of such metaphors this article this uh, this article is an attempt to reinstate the for the age old stereotype of creating a death and disease of the east whereas in the same condition the, the who had un, un, announced otherwise therefore my research findings include that it is very important to know the authenticity of the resource or the news which we are reading and being a, a news uh, agent who is so large and who covers a lot of audience this is an unnecessary attempt to put down the the east and an unnecessary attempt to fit us into the same stereotype and the research uh, setbacks or the research limitations include the fact that the researcher was not able to uh, gain access to more number of articles due to kind of time constraint and many of the articles were unavailable especially during this time of may 13 to 14 may 11 to 15 so this is my uh, so it is essential to check facts before understanding the fiction of such news thank you so uh thank you mariam uh, it was again a short presentation a uh, nice one uh, so uh, any questions let me see whether there are any questions uh, you are unmuted ma'am do you want to see something hello you know clear ma'am uh, do you want to add on something to what you said in your presentation you have something to say yes come on yeah yeah now now what it uh, you, your your internet is unstable ma'am can you just uh, okay okay tell tell yeah yeah speak speak ma'am can you can you hear me It's not clear, ma'am. It's not clear. It's not clear. Okay, I'll try to say. Okay, so maybe maybe low bandwidth, ma'am. Bandwidth yeah. problem. Okay. So anyway, uh, we'll if time permits, we have uh, I mean uh, ten more presenters uh, waiting. So uh, we'll go to the next presenter, ma'am. Maybe if time permits, uh, uh, we can have an interaction. Okay. Now next next presenter. he said again has not uh, sent a slide no he has sent only her slide and uh, her name is uh, madanki a and uh, she will be speaking on positive outcomes brought out by online teaching during an epoch of crisis anyway it's very positive okay she is going to speak about the outcome positive outcomes so let's uh, listen to her over to her for presentation
ادفرتيزمنت انا لا اذا شاريت الشاريت ده كليك اون ذس يا كليك My name is Martini and I'm doing my second MA in English Literature in PSG. As we all know, the world is As we all know, the world is gripped by an unforeseen pandemic called the COVID-19 or the coronavirus, which requires high sanitary measures to keep the disease at bay. Uh, so, different governments from around the world have uh, put down different kinds of lockdown in order to uh, save the people uh, from this impending danger. Now that there is a decline in the number of patients, the organizations have slowly started functioning again. But it is not so for the educational institutions. Uh, the government still has restrictions for them as they feel that children are more susceptible to, to this disease and making them gather in one place for the purpose of education is gonna cause the disease to spread faster. Therefore, the educational institutions have taken up uh, different measures uh, to carry on with the classes. That is, they have taken up the digital portal. That is, uh, they have started online classes. The educational institutions have started either using learning management system portals, also known as LMS portals, or they send pre-recorded videos of the class there are various advantages to these online classes. Um, the students and teachers can follow the government restrictions and have classes at the same time from the comfort and safety of their home. In addition, the education is also not bound by a geographical barriers thanks to the announcement from MHRD which allows the top 100 universities of India to uh, offer n number of MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses to the students. Therefore, the students can access education from wherever they are. They are no longer bound by geography. The teacher, of course, the time, place is flexible. They are going to take it from their home. The time is also flexible. And they can record the videos at their convenience and send it to the students during the stipulated time. Uh, one more important advantage of an online class is that the creativity of the teacher is not confined to the content given in the textbook. They can uh, refer to external blogs and websites which contribute towards the same subject as given in the book. Uh, when the teachers don't have to shush the students in the class, they also have the opportunity of completing the prepared content in a given time frame. More advantages, uh, portals like uh, Zoom and other online portals, they offer the option of share screen. Uh, a board is a blackboard or a whiteboard is very important in the class. This, uh, these Zoom and other such portals offer an option called share screen, which also gives them an option of a board so that they can write on the board so that the feeling of a classroom is also not completely lost. They can also share websites from their system so that the children can read them during the class time. Um, moreover, 
uh, the children are supposed to talk of course there's this is there in the normal class also but online classes encourages uh, continuous usage of the language uh, of applications like uh, microsoft classrooms allow the teacher to uh, divide the students into different groups and encourage debates so the children are now made to talk in english and the teacher can also come in and supervise individually which is not possible in a classroom therefore the students are compelled to improve their speaking skills uh, moreover this lockdown has not provided the children with textbook or print out or any other reading material therefore the only option left to them is taking notes during the classes uh, therefore uh, their writing skills also is also encouraged the teacher can also give uh, activity like activities like reading from a blog or reading from uh, uh, reading from websites uh, which can uh, which exposes the children to a practical usage of the language and the most important aspect is assessment uh, exams are conducted so that uh, children the teachers can know how much the children have understood online exams uh, allow the children to allow the teachers to give uh, tests with, within a stipulated time frame that is they have to submit the assignments on a particular time or else there will never be the opportunity to do so again uh, moreover some uh, applications like my classroom uh, prevent the students from opening a new tab for them to refer the answers so the uh, chances of mal practices is re are reduced to a great extent and uh, it as soon as a child finishes the assessment uh, the record of the same is uh, given to the teacher therefore it is easier to map their progress the website can also be designed in such a way that it shows pie charts uh, which show that uh, these many students have finished so far uh, the students may think that uh, the teacher is telling just to encourage them but when they see the pie chart uh, and see that many students many of the fellow students have completed it proves you know it proves as a as a kind of encouragement to them and uh, when during this online classes the teacher can also give an assessment at the end of each unit and the pre recorded classes also uh, enable uh, re watching them in order to clarify their doubts of course there are advantages there are disadvantages also Uh, when it comes to online classes the internet connection may or may not be proper in all the times and all the places uh, moreover the children can use the excuse of these online classes to uh, spend more time on the internet therefore parental care is required uh, for effective uh, management effective time and uh, resource management though there are many uh, disadvantages the high number of advantages prove that not only prove that online teaching is effective but also shows that online teaching might be a future for the education field as a whole thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am are you online thank you sir ah okay okay yes sir uh, do you want to add something to what you said uh sir i would like to say that i have personal experience with both teaching and studying because i've been working as a part time teacher for the past one year okay and i and i found that it was uh, i was able to manage the students in a much effective manner in the online classes because they could not talk to their uh, fellow students in the online classes as they do in class okay 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 so that's your experience uh, they are they, i mean uh, Are there any questions here? Can you see the chat box? Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, are there any questions for you, Day? If there are no, questions, uh, try to answer. Okay. So we will wait maybe uh, till the end. If uh, any questions related to you uh, comes up, I will uh, then I mean address those questions. Okay. Right. Now next, uh, yes. go to the next presenter. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are going to the next presenter. It's uh, Nau Deep Kaur. Nau Deep Kaur again, a PhD research scholar from Dev University, Delhi, and she's going to speak on coexistence with nature in the selected uh, stories of Gobindad Mohandi. Okay, so uh, over to you, Nau Deep Kaur.
नवनीत गिल First Trevor Sahit Academy Award for his work on Rutala Santana and he won the country's highest literary award uh, that is Gyanpeet Award for his work Maki Matala and he's been a keen observer of life around him. He's uh, best known for portraying tribal life uh, but he has also written about uh, you know, uh, rural areas and city life. He has chosen words and phrases from the everyday speech of ordinary men and women. Uh, he has also uh, tried his hand at uh, various literary genres like um, uh, plays, uh, you know, uh, essays, criticism essays, and uh, stories, novels, etc. So today I'll be talking about his stories, where he presents uh, the role of a nature that influences the behavior of an individual. So first of all, it, it could have happened. It's about Prabodh Babu, a very responsible, sincere and oversensitive father who is uh, worried about the welfare of his daughter who is uh, late from college. He feels very insecure and lonely in the city due to the people's indifferent behavior. He has a longing to live in a city, to live in a village. But he feels satisfied on looking at the greenery around him around his newly constructed house. The open spaces around the house delight him, making him overcome his negative thoughts. And then uh, a, a Beautiful Woman, it's another story where it's about Patoni, a village woman who is uh, concerned about the well-being of her husband, who is an executive in a city. He is very confused and um, she is very confused and panicky as she goes to the city for the first time where uh, she doesn't know any whereabouts about his husband, about her husband, uh, who is not in contact with her from the last four months. But when she visualizes um, the beautiful flats and green covers hiding the uh, walls in the city, it attracts her so much that she just forgets about all her worries. She uh, perceives that it's the surrounding uh, you know, that that influence the behavior of an individual, which is reflected in the passengers who are very polite, decent, and respectful. And then there is Lord Kripala Beckons. It's about uh, Jagabandhu's love for open spaces and lush green plantations. Uh, after retirement, he settles in the city as he uh, you know has a craze of uh, growing vegetables, fruits, and spending time under the vast sky and living in his ancestral land. His routine is to uh, 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 look after his orchid and orchard and pond where he feels completely satisfied. Whenever he feels upset, he feels relieved by uh, you know gazing on those green foliage. Going to the city and visit his uh, brother one day, but. You know, he wants, uh, he goes to the city uh, to visit his brother, but uh, when he uh, comes back, but he comes back from there as soon as possible because, you know, uh, he can't live away from uh, his garden, his village, and the uh, open spaces over there. And then you have to laugh as about Bene, who learns to be optimistic for the fog. He's, you know, financi financially very weak and helpless to even fulfill his basic needs. He's angry because he thinks that you know it's injustice uh, injustice upon him uh, to be poor uh, but he uh, you know he gets an idea from uh, Paul that uh, you know as it disappears uh, once it comes so he thinks that his poverty it will also disappear one day and he becomes cheerful just with that thought and uh, that fog helps him to be uh, remain stable in all his circumstances to have self-control and not to lose temper over all those issues. The solution is another about uh, Dadi Brahman who remains uh, overburdened with the uh, file work in his office and he has no time to witness the beauty of the nature. In spite of his best efforts, uh, his condition is miserable and he is utterly hopeless. He is, his boss uh, is always irritated with him, that's why he feels defeated. Um, with his uh, uh, goat around him, he feels, you know, completely when that uh, goat uh, looks tenderly at him, then he, he, all his uh, worries, they're just taken away by that. Whereas other people who are in his office, his boss and other colleagues, they're just 
show uh, you know the lack of affection uh, with that goat and they are more tempted to get the meat of the goat or the amount that that, that uh, selling that goat or its meat will earn them and then there is bird bird where shankar mishra he has a very cool attachment with a blue bodied bird one day in hot afternoon uh, when he is you know completely lonely that that uh, bird it gives him joy and soothing effect it's the one single sight of that bird it uh, gives him you know a sense of wonder and joy it's in fact of that moment that remained embedded with his mind all the time and whenever he is you know uh, lonely or having some worries it just um, uh, 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 lends cheer to him and uh, whenever he gets trapped in some moments of disappear anxiety and hopelessness it's this word that uh, gives optimism to him and there is one story that is shikar it's about um, a mahanti uh, who states that um, that not even the uh, adults but even the children of the civilization they are um, living as they're living away from nature they are losing all their affection with it in the jungle the children are excited to kill animals and uh, they shout at their father not to you know miss the aim there is a concern regarding the safety and security of wild, uh, wild animals that is possible only if man has emotional attachment with nature so coexistence with nature mahanti says that is it can only inspire uh, human beings uh, you know, to preserve nature so basically mahanti has said that uh, you know the craving for nature is there in uh, human beings and how when there are some indifferent human beings who have uh, who when they because they remain away from nature so they have no peace of mind it is only with the company of nature that man forgets his sorrows and disappear and he thinks that um, uh, this exploitation of nature uh, it has to be stopped and man needs to be um, concerned towards nature not only for his own sake but for the sake of whole humanity so we yeah, are that's it thank you so much so uh, thanks a lot and uh, navneet uh, do you ha- i hope you are online yeah yeah hello sir Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you have anything to add to your paper? Because it was a different okay. paper, especially from uh, literature. So we are having a mixture of literature and language here. So naturally, that was a very interesting paper, and we were taken to the world of literature again. Uh, so, if you want to add something, and if you, if uh, no questions are there, we'll go to the next paper. Do you want to add something? Okay. people nothing much i just want to say that we really need to you know connect with nature for a fulfilled and a balanced life yes. and otherwise you know uh, although we have everything in our lives but still our lives will be empty because as mahanti says that is is nature only that nurtures us uh, you, so, yeah, you 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 said it uh, mrs ka miss ka because yeah. uh, now now in the pandemic period we are wearing masks when nature yeah. there was no traffic and the nature was it uh, in, in in its all glory but then yeah. uh, we people are wearing masks and yeah. we are not uh, no no that, that's i don't know it's a pa- it's, it's a paradox i should say because Seriously, the whole yeah. world without uh, factories without i mean uh, vehicles without uh, heavy traffic the nature is uh, in its glory it's serene but we people are wearing masks what a paradox yeah. <laughs> okay uh, they are anyway, enjoying yeah. and we are ma- wearing masks yeah. that's it we are ma- wearing masks we 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 are we, we were supposed to travel without masks enjoying nature the serene beauty of nature but we are wearing masks we are not allowed to go out okay yeah. I men 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 often uh, things happen often like that okay uh, so uh, thank you very much for your paper and we are you, going sir. to the next paper Okay, next paper, next presenter is uh, uh, Miss Noble A. Palliot, uh, and she's going to speak on changing trends in educational landscape in the post-COVID-19 scenario. And over to her, over to Noble now. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Noble. Can I'll you be, hear me? We will, yeah, yeah. We'll be. You, you are here. You are there. I know. so naturally we'll be uh, having your presentation uh, and then uh, you can uh, take up uh, the questions okay sure okay okay right ji 
നോബൽ എ പാലിയത് അസിസ്റ്റൻറ്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് സേക്രഡ് ഹാർട്ട് കോളേജ് ഫോർ വിമൻ ചാലക്കുടി ഐ എം ബിഫ് യു ടു പ്രസെൻറ്റ് എ പേപ്പർ ടൈറ്റിൽഡ് ആസ് ദ ലിവർ ഓഫ് ദ ന്യൂ നോമൽ a reflective note on the changing trends in the educational landscape post covid-19 let me begin with a famous quote made by the french existentialist philosopher albert camus in his path breaking book the myth of sisyphus in a universe suddenly deprived of illusions and lights man feels an alien a stranger we human beings are all currently passing through a phase of frightening strange and novel experience in the disguise of the covid-19 pandemic the repercussions of the continuing crisis triggered off by the looming pandemic spread have now become obviously discernible in different fields of discipline especially in the educational sector the present disruption and rupture in the educational scenario calls for certain noticeable winds of change one such change is the paradigm shift from the regular mode of teaching learning process to the online mode of teaching learning process that is the change is from the traditional the conventional and the physical classrooms to the online classes and this change is gradually being internalized by the teacher student community in its wake this sudden and new transition has its own merits and demerits covid-19 is compelling parents and teachers to become tech savvy persons within a short span of time to cater to the needs of the children and learners while the faculty members are grappling with new ways of managing the transition to digital education amidst other pressing commitments and engagements uh, students are left clinging on to mobile phones and computer screens for ease of online communication schools colleges and universities require high speed internet online platform tools stable it infrastructure and faculty members who are comfortable teaching online students also need high speed internet and computer or mobiles to attend these sessions or watch pre recorded classes the digital divide between the so called digital migrants and the digital natives is ever increasing it has almost created a situation wherein teachers who are not networking are not working and students who cannot get access to online classes will be even if for a while excluded from the arena of mainstream education to conclude even if the corona virus pandemic subsides its ripple effects will definitely create a tremendous and permanent impact on the sphere of education the times now are very different the times from now will also be so different it's high time to revisit rethink revamp 
restructure and redefine the frontiers and borders of education. The need of the hour is a wake-up call to adapt to the new normal. So, let's get started. Thank you all. Oh, uh, Noble, that was a nice presentation. Uh, and uh, some of the ideas, Noble, you are there, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, for okay, your okay. Yeah, and uh, some of the uh, quotes were uh, ones which I used to repeat in my webinars. Anyway, nice. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay. Do you have something to add to what you've said? Sure, sir. I'm ready ah. to contribute. Ah, but before on, on. adding ah. on, mm -hmm. let me begin with a brief expression of gratitude to the organizers of the two-day international conference for having selected me as one among the 40 paper presenters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Same to us. The, okay. Okay, okay. The lure of the new normal. Mm -hmm. A reflective note on the changing trends in the educational landscape post-COVID-19. Okay. This is how I entitled my investigative okay. study. And, 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 and uh, Noble, let me tell you, you have maximum of one minute to contribute, okay? Because we have uh, another almost eight presenters waiting and uh, time is running short. So please, please be very brief. I, I will wind up soon. I'll wind up soon. Uh, I would like to condense my presentation into four key points. Point number one is the paradigm shift from the regular mode of teaching learning process to the online mode of teaching learning process. Point number two, COVID-19 acts like a catalytic agent in the field of education. Why? Because it's trying to bridge the digital gap or digital divide between the digital migrants and the digital natives. Point number three, there is a shift towards personalized online learning from the part of students brought about by the disruption or interruption or rupture in the field of education. And what happens is um, students become self-sufficient, self-reliant um, as they try to decode and interpret the text as received from the teachers. And the last point is a uh, huge investment, enormous funding is uh, needed from the part of the schools, universities, and colleges in order to minimize uh, technological disparities and maximize democratization of online education. Okay, 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 Noble. Thank, uh, you, uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, with that, we are moving on to the next presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, next presentation is by yes, it's by Praveena Thompson, and uh, she's going to speak on digital resistance literature and uh, cure baiting, right? And uh, she is an associate professor of Department of English, University College, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala, India. Okay, ma'am, I, I hope you are online and we will uh, take up questions immediately after the paper is presented. Okay, so over to Praveena. resistance literature and queer baiting. With the advent of the digital era, literature has undergone many transformations, evolving into new genres and adopting new media to reach aficionados. The parameters of production and consumption of literary artifacts have also shifted to afford a more active role to readers who are no longer content to be passive consumers. Assuming the mantle of prosumers, being producers and consumers at the same time, they mine the material from the work that they are emotionally engaged to create transformative works of their own. 
even though copyright laws prevent these works from being published for profit, they circulate freely in the virtual spaces called fandoms, where fans aggregate to discuss and celebrate their favorite work as well as the derivative versions of it emanating from their own works. The transformative fan works stem from certain dissatisfactions and disagreements which linger in the fan's mind as well as from a desire to be continuously engaged with it in various ways. The digital age has also prompted the academic world to adopt new methods that do new landscapes to keep up with its trend in terms of humanities. The internet and search engines have become indispensable if we are to keep keep pace with the changing phase of literary creation and dissemination. Fan fiction is inspired by literary works, movies, television series, sports teams, music bands, and even celebrities. Media fandoms are among the largest and most prolific among uh, fandoms. Fans often disagree with how characters are portrayed in certain episodes, how the storyline develops, and most commonly, about how the series ends. The fan created storylines of fandom gain such wide acceptance at times that potential people are forced to take note and tweak the original storyline to satisfy the fans. Sometimes it is on an ideological areas that fans take issue with the favorite shows. The type of representation, the lack of representation of marginalized characters is critiqued by fans creatively. The representation of LGBTQIA characters in mainstream media has always been fraught with complications. Um, in the early part of the 20th century, until the um, latter, latter half, you had uh, explicit prohibition of that. And after that, you had. Uh, straight characters being superimposed with uh, stereotypical uh, queer characteristics. And this was done and never, 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 it care was taken never to portray them in a good light. They were either villains or they were treated as a joke. And this was all done with the, um, a, with the uh, feeling that otherwise the mainstream viewership would be alienated. And Queer painting is the practice of hinting at a homosexual relationship uh, in, within, between characters and later on refraining from pursuing it any further and assigning them to heterosexual relationships. Uh, this, the object is to get the uh, queer audience invested in the show and to continue to watch the show and become fans of the show and uh, but never giving in to the uh, rational consequence of uh, such hints that are thrown out uh, because they are afraid that the heterosexual audience will not uh, accept it. So in order to tag them both along, both sections along, they uh, they throw out such hints but then fail to follow through, through with, uh, with such relationships. And they even establish the same characters in heteronormative relationships. And slash and femme slash are homoerotic fiction. Slash is male male, and femme slash is um, uh, uh, lesbian fiction. And one of the early pairs, Captain Kirk and Spock from Star Trek, they were tra um, um, made into they were paired up in slash fiction. In the early one of the early fandoms to spring up online. Resistance literature is literature engaged in socio political activity challenging uh, cultural hegemony, um, the mainstream media and the representation. This is challenged by, uh, by resistance literature. And my argument is that uh, the main stimuli for the production of slash and uh, from slash, uh, slash fiction is the queer baiting strategies employed by the creators of the show. And that this fiction forms a body of resistance literature online against the attempt to erase the natural presence of homosexuality. In order to substantiate this, uh, the slash and from slash fanfic of uh, the fandoms of the television series Game of Thrones, BBC's Sherlock, Supernatural, and Merlin 
from archiveofarome.org are explored and analyzed with the help of story tells. Game of Thrones is a fantasy series based on George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire novels. Here you have two main pairs coming up, Sansa and Marjorie and Daenerys and Yara. So you have the one uh, lady giving a flower to another, uh, holding hands, holding um, and uh, lingering glances exchanged. But this is never followed through. You have Yara and uh, um, Daenerys also doing the same. In Sherlock, this is considered to be John Luck is the pairing that is called and uh, between them and um, many other characters in the show itself they mistake them as a homosexual couple but then it is never made canon by the producers. Supernatural is a dark fantasy series and here you have Dean the hyper-masculine hyper uh, protagonist on a third protagonist. Uh, he has uh, um, he has lingering glances and uh, a profound bond with Castiel, an angel and a human vessel. And this is never uh, acknowledged, this is never followed through. And, like, and similarly, his brother Sam with the Archangel Gabriel. And Marlin and Nada is another uh, main uh, homosexual pairing that is uh, focused upon by the fans from the series Marlin. And in conclusion, fan fiction rejects objectivity and neutrality. It challenges the norm, it defies cultural practices, and uh, so it qualifies as resistance literature and it gives hope that there will be greater visibility for queer characters and queer relationships in mainstream media. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, your present. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, do you have something to add to it? I think uh, there are uh, um, questions. Okay, I mean uh, something uh, to add to your paper, ma'am. Uh, I would like to add that as we are thinking about the new normal, yes. uh, we are talking about in all areas. Uh, in uh, in connection with the environment, in uh, connection with pedagogy. Uh, when a new normal is established, it would be better to think about uh, adequate representation to the marginalized sections of our own species, mm. of people who are rendered invisible by mainstream media. So, yeah, as are, are, you, are you speaking about uh, digital divide, ma'am? Uh, no, sir. In the new normal, I... uh, when you when you speak about the marginalized, I think uh, you'll have to mention digital <laughs> divide. Or I mean, are you speaking? I mean, the uh, normal I'm, case. You know, talking about the queer uh, section, queer people, and okay. I'm talking about acknowledging the resistance that comes up in the digital world, because rather than marginal, even fans are marginalized. They are considered as fanatics. Their voices, their works are not really acknowledged as relevant in today's world but, but do you here think, they should also do you think ma'am see especially in the digital world in the new normal when uh, digitization plays a vital role okay uh, when, when there is a paradigm shift um, do you think that uh, they'll be more recognized yes i think their works and their opinions will gain more uh, more credence in the new world because yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the population necessarily has to move online in this yeah, naturally. World, in this time, so it, yes. it's everyone's space. See, yes. publishing was a big dream for many when we, yes. we had only uh, what do you call, uh, I mean, uh, normal books, right? Yes. Once it became online, you can have your own blog, the world will see it. Otherwise, yeah, I think we all know the difficulty of getting uh, published. Yes, different but noises now, now, will be get heard. Yeah, because of that's this. it. So I think the new normal will address. Uh, the difficulties faced by the marginalized. Yes. Okay. And bringing them into the fold, like giving them adequate space and representation. Yeah, that's it. So I think the new normal often offers a lot of possibilities and also a lot of uh, what do you call uh, opportunities for the marginalized. That's what I would like to think it in that way, ma'am. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank exactly. you for the presentation, ma'am. And stay online. If time permits, we will uh, take up other questions. Okay. So we pass of on course. to the next next presenter. And uh, his name is K. Pridham. 
and uh, he's an assistant professor in English uh, in the Jain University, Bangalore. And she's going to, he's going to speak on suggestopedia or uh, desuggestive uh, learning, a paramount bewilderment. Okay, so anyway, uh, the, the, the sound and the, the topic sounds uh, nice. So let's go to his uh, presentation. I'm sure uh, Kepritham is online and uh, to ready, uh, ready to take up questions. Okay, so I'm moving to Pritham's presentation. Pritham's presentation. Sound, no, sound is very little. Okay. So, my topic is. Uh, good morning. I am. Uh, uh, sorry to say, the sound is uh, very little. It's audible, sir. It's audible. It's audible. Topic. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. The conference falls under the category communication during online. So my topic is suggestopedia or desuggestive learning, a paramount bewilderment. So why I am calling it as a paramount bewilderment, uh, you know, is to convey the ultimate confusion that the faculty members are facing today. So the major question that has haunted the teaching fraternity is to teach, is how to teach effectively so that students get maximum benefits. The options are myriad, ranging from classroom. Uh, teaching which is a traditional method to present day online and recorded sessions. Varied options are explored in this uh, research write up. So, the teaching method, so what exactly is Suggestopedia? The teaching method developed by the Bulgarian psychotherapist Georgi Lozer, no, he says Suggestopedia applies positive suggestion in teaching. The name is derived from suggestion and pedagogy. It is based on suggestology, a psychological theory that says human beings respond to subtle clues of which they are not consciously aware of. So he is trying to say that the external factors matter a lot in terms of comprehension, understanding and many aspects related to teaching. So what are the main principles of suggestopedia? Joy and psycho relaxation. He highlights joy and psycho relaxation. He says not just uh, who teaches matters, how they teach and what is the environment around it. So what type of joy or psychological impact the teaching has matters. So he says learners will use their hidden potential only when they feel relaxed and happy. For example, we may during our school days or you know, even in our college days we may have, we would have had our favorite classes or our favorite teacher. So it's not because that we love that particular subject, it's because we loved a particular teacher or we like that particular teacher a lot because of the ambience or the atmosphere that he or she created. So that is what he means. Then harmonious collaboration of the conscious and the, the unconscious. So here we can um, consider. Of there, there's a, a sound problem, okay. Uh, but uh, I think everyone can read from the slides. So it's, it's uh, nothing can be done okay. for this. Then okay. The most conspicuous characteristics of Suggestopedia are the decoration, furniture and arrangement of the classroom, the use of music and the authoritative behavior of the teacher. Based on this point, uh, I believe that majority of the uh, uh, high-end uh, high end schools are incorporating such uh, greater ambience, focusing on the students' uh, interests. Nowadays, however, it is uh, focused more on desuggestive learning and now is often called as desuggestopedia. So, uh, present day what is happening? So, suggestopedia says these are the primary aspects that is uh, very much required, but uh, very much required in the sense uh, a school with a appropriate ambience, all the infrastructure, basic facilities produced to students. But now, students are more focusing on desuggestopedia or uh, the classrooms are being more focused on desensitivity because of the present day uh, COVID-19 crisis. So all these days we had this uh, traditional classroom uh, way of teaching where all these ambience, class setup, like 
only 30 students need to be in a particular batch or teacher should be qualified to a certain extent you have you should have this basic minimum physical uh, infrastructure facilities like a uh, school should have a uh, playground only then it will be permitted and various other factors so this is like the suggestopedia things were suggested to education institutions to follow but now uh, when we have moved on to online learning so all these parameters become desuggestified so whoever suggested this earlier they themselves are withdrawing uh, themselves from these suggestions so what are the sample research questions and areas included in this write up and what are the probable solutions so the first question that i am uh, dealing here is uh, is standard method of teaching english effective so my main focus is on related to teaching english not other subjects so standard way of teaching refers to uh, refers to a classroom way of teaching english uh, be it english grammar or english uh, uh, literature but is so is it effective is it effective so again uh, the this question the answer for this question is very much relative because when can you say uh, one way of teaching is effective and compared to other is when you compare with others so when there is no alternative that was the effective one but now we have an alternative concept like blended learning where we use classroom teaching also uh, we use internet and uh, access uh, and give access to youtube videos also so it's a mix of it's a blend of both the classical and the modern one then does conscious and subconscious mind play a role in english comprehension again the answer is obvious uh, for example you can't expect a student to comprehend or to enhance one's comprehension to a maximum extent if he or she is seated in a dark room or a unhygienic atmosphere and even and uh, that is that is that is uh, under physical characteristics or infrastructure when it comes to subconscious and conscious mind when if the student is dull or if he or she has some family problems they may not be able to focus appropriately so the answer for this is yes subconscious and subconscious mind do matter a lot then the third one is does ambience in an english classroom matter yes it matters but in when when it comes to online learning there is no such concept of ambience where the role of ambience is very much limited to the teacher and the students uh, Uh, room the only ambience that is required here is it should be noise free then does stress affect english learning yes it does uh, as i said if one has familial problems uh, as the intense stress that one has to score more marks it does affect uh, in english learning uh, considering the fact that most of the students neglect uh, english when compared to other subjects then does music enhance comprehension of english skills music uh, the role of music uh, in curing diseases is experimented in various fields and even in various situations it has the uh, music has proved to be effective similarly here also music enhances comprehension of english for example if you continue to listen to english music or english songs lyrics you tend to enhance your vocabulary related to english then does the teachers authority attitude towards students impact learning so in a traditional suggestopedia tick learning it used to impact but now the teacher no way can show the authority because of a distance in communication then can multiple ways of teaching be used in english classroom yes blended learning is the ideal way to teach english which is a mix of traditional classical method and also the present online method can english teaching be customized according to students needs yes it can be customized and the advantages of internet and computer have empowered the teacher is online teaching better than classroom teaching for enhancing english skills when you when you don't have an choice when you don't have choice online teaching is the best one when when you have to maintain social distance when uh, schools or colleges do not have appropriate infrastructure to maintain the social distance online is the effective one will recorded teaching of english be useful yes it will be useful for students especially for uh, self uh, students who are uh, self learners okay who do, who does not need that push from the faculty members so the method i have explored i have used the exploratory method of research uh, to analyze the research questions the findings reveal that there is no 
one ideal view of teaching is this the research implies that teaching needs to be customized in accordance with the students needs and it is more oriented towards blended learning so blended learning is the ideal way of teaching english in the present day uh, norms where social distancing uh, is made mandatory thank you okay uh, there was uh, again uh, there are some sound problems okay voice problems but even then uh, that was okay i, I i'm sure that uh, pritham is online right yes sir yes sir I'm okay online. okay uh, do you want to add something to it uh, no sir i just uh, thank you for the opportunity sir <laughs> okay okay thank you're you welcome man uh, where do you teach you teach uh, or you're bangalore in oh bangalore. bangalore oh right right next to us team yes. uh, yes. nice nice uh, sharing your knowledge sir uh, uh, maybe i mean uh, we'll collaborate later okay sure, sir. and thank now you. now we are going to the next presenter and next presenter is rosmi thomas and uh, she is from bcm college kottayam a uh, post graduate in english uh, literature from bcm kottayam and she works as a guest lecturer in ms college nedungandam so uh, and her uh, topic is a roasting trend and popular culture in kerala okay so we go on to her presentation over to rosmi Thomas. gives that popular culture is a mass produced commercial culture it is widely favored by many people and it is uh, it, it is interchangeably used with the term ideology to said by john story ideology of the high culture people not of the common man it was always favored by the ideology of high culture people roasting trend in kerala during lockdown season we saw a dramatic change in the field of arts social life financial life nature etc as the uh, as for the communication and entertainment people start to find novel means to communicate with each other and they find everything become digital as a result people, a lot of people start to use social media as a platform to show their talents and they used to and they use facebook youtube tiktok to show off their ta talents and they many of them instantly got famous uh, famous during this season Thus came roasters. Roasters are uh, people who are positively criticize the videos or uh, in TikToks and YouTube, etc. They have uh, their own unique way of presentation, quick wit, and selection of trending videos make them instantly famous among common men. They influence the public. They uh, influencing the public is a good thing, but it should be genuinely ethically genuine rather than just criticizing the post. Major roasters are include Arju. get roasted with the guy three mallu analyst etc and uh, the the problem is that when the roasters guide the or when the roasters roasting the videos based on the notions of high culture society based the notions of high culture society then it will badly influence the public that what we have seen in roasting videos tension between high culture and popular culture is always a trending uh, topic in cultural study Popular culture is interchangeably used with ideology, and ideology is a weapon for masking, distortion, or concealment by the high culture people. In other words, the work of it is the work it is in the work of work in the interest of powerful against the interest of the powerless people. Ideology conceals the reality of domination from those in power, and the subordinate class, the common man, do not see themselves as oppressed or exploited. under the distortion of powerful ideologies don't story argues that the text the text include today's television fiction movies pop songs uh, youtube channels tiktok videos etc always present a particular image of the world the image of high cultured people for example we all have a gen we always generally judging the people based on whether they are white or black look uh, their look their language their financial background their sexuality their gender etc especially in a patriarchal society like kerala 
people generally uh, judging uh, others based on their gender, sexuality, power structure and caste of course. Louis Althus, a French Marxist philosopher, said that an ideology is not simply as a body of ideas but it is a material practices. That type of material practice of ideology can be seen in the roasting videos of Abju and Kerala police. One example is the uh, usage of derogatory wet colony warning throughout the comment section of Abju's roasting video, where Abju never ever been used that uh, bed for himself, but his followers used the weird colony manual to indicate their dislike towards the poor people coming from the marginalized section of society. The question is that why did those comments used to the weird colony instead of villa or flat where the privileged class people belong? The answer is obvious that because it is colony where marginalized people belong, not in villas or flats, they will not dare to say anything against upper caste people. It is widely considered that some practices like hair coloring, using casuals by boys, dressing, and dressing styles of the youths are considered as part of popular culture, while the five culture people uh, saw them as something inferior than themselves. Here we can trace the bunch of people who support body shaming because of the, they, because of the popular culture they need to follow the high, notions of high culture society. Gender and social bullying is another topic in um, roasting section that uh, using curse words or bad words on social media platform cannot be encouraged but recently many guys instantly got famous through usage of bad words or cursing words. The worst is that many people commented as supporting him even though he have bad mouthing on TikTok. The irony is that when a girl started to use bad words on TikTok and YouTube, the same bunch of people started to attacking her for using such mean words, the clear indication of a biased society. She was roasted by Arjo and even Kerala police. That is, in a patriarchal society, women are subjected to maintain a code of conduct where she, she should be remain calm and silent, whatever has happened to her, whatever has happened to her. But as a men, they are free from any mode of any, uh, they are free from this code of conduct and they are free to uh, free to speak out anything they want to. Sexual identity is another topic here and we have a clear heterosexual society in Kerala. Kerala is not ready to take queer identity as a, as a mainstream sexual identity when the government tries their best to normalize the queer identity but these people are still um, making them outcast being a queer. This attitude can be seen in Arju's roasting video where he was making fun of two guys who made a video for Arju and Arju unconsciously blamed them for being a gay. Whether they are gay or not, it is not, doesn't matter here, but his attitude is the attitude of the public that he was even uh, he was even supported by many of his fans for being for calling them as gays. That is the attitude of the public towards the queer identity. Hegemony of high culture. Popular culture originates from the people. It is a mass culture, but there is always a hegemony of high culture. Popular culture is mass culture, but the high culture always trying to impose their identity towards their ideologies towards popular culture. That was Antonio Gramsci's defined as hegemony, the way in which dominant group in society, through a process of intellectual and moral leadership, seeks to win the consent of subordinate group in society. And John Story puts that popular culture is a site of struggle between resistance of the subordinate group and poor forces of incorporation operating by dominant group. In social media platform, we can see that the dominant group is trying to impose their ideologies towards the popular culture. Through their ideology, they are, try they are trying to normalize the popular culture by imposing their high culture identities, ideologies towards the popular culture and they are trying to normalize the high culture you know, ideologies of high culture as a popular culture. The conclusion is that class struggle is always the um, class struggle is always the topic of history and history is the battle between haves and half nots. This struggle can be seen in always in all social platform including social media and just how the, uh, the so-called privileged class tries to teach them privileged about the class elements of society Rosters and TikTok users for each other and Rosters are trying to um, trying to build up some do's and don'ts for the TikTok and based on the notions of high cultured society. Consciously or unconsciously, we are also part of this resistance and imposition force of culture 
and the battle will continue until the war ends. Thank you. Hello, you are online, I think, right? Yes. yes okay, I'm okay. Here. And I have an announcement before that. See, uh, we have uh, received around 900 feedback forms filled in. Okay. And uh, uh, the registration was around 1,200 to 300. So if anyone is yet to send the feedback forms, they can make it because uh, the certificate for the participants will be issued only on the basis of uh, filling up, filling in and uh, sending us the, so 900 we have already received. Uh, maybe uh, the registration was around 1,200. Just a reminder for you. And now uh, to the paper, it was again an interesting paper with literature and theory. So naturally, thanks again for taking us to the world of literature. And you have something to add on to it, presenter? Do you have something to add yes, on to it? Do you want, do you want to add Nothing, something? Sir. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Then uh, naturally we'll uh, go on to the next presenter. It is Dr. Okay. Ruji Thoma, academician, researcher, writer. Okay. Uh, teaching literature online, opportunity or crisis. So she, uh, I think she's going to evaluate whether this online teaching is an opportunity or a crisis. And Dr. Rujit Omar is a academician and a, a writer and a teacher. So let's see. Let's go to over to Rujit Omar for her uh, presentation. lecturer Navi Degree College, Lucknow. The title of my presentation is Teaching Literature Online, Opportunity or Crisis. Now, in this particular presentation, I will be dealing with first, impact of COVID-19 upon teaching, second, technological challenges to online teaching, third, pedagogical challenges to teaching literature online, survey, data analysis and conclusion. Now, as far as the impact of COVID-19 upon teaching is concerned, universities and colleges have closed. Because of this, online teaching is on pace. Thus, there is a paradigm shift that can be seen in, uh, in, in, this, in the way that all the offline courses become online in a matter of days. Therefore, teachers who are unprepared, who do not have any knowledge of the technology, they are taking online classes. Because of this, learning outcomes will not be achieved. And this will impact upon the result of the student as an individual, school in general, and to the recruitment process collectively. As far as the technological challenges to online teaching is concerned, we have the network most of the time and that makes it very difficult to interact with the students and therefore distraction occurs. There is a lack of technical knowledge also, which is not only among the students but also the teachers. In rural and remote areas, we have so many connectivity problems that the students are unable to approach or use technology. Next is we have a deficiency of gadget. Students do not have smartphones, do not have laptops, do not have digital equipment so that they can access technology. Next we have technical cliches, lack of competency and disturbances in audio and video which interrupts the class um, many times. Now, pedagogical challenges to ton online, sorry, Pedagogical challenges to teaching literature online. First, we have the lack of personal interaction with the student. Second, absence of analysis and direct question answer session. Absence of analysis. So anal analysis is absent in online teaching. And analysis is a very significant part of literature altogether. 
analysis of the literary text, discussion, direct question answer session, then only we can understand that the student can comprehend their lecture or not. Next is passive learning by students. It means the involve, involvement of students is, neglig, is negligible. Next is absence of facial expressions, just grammatication and feeling lively, which is very crucial to the part of the teaching literature because literature is not only about about uh, about uh, taking theory but it is also about the facial expressions the way you the way you behave the way you uh, posture and all these things is a very significant part of teaching literature next is the class becomes one directional that is monologue only the teacher is teaching and because of this the flow of knowledge interrupts now i took a survey in which I took the responses of 40 eminent professors and teachers of different colleges and universities across India. The main objective is that I would like to find out which technique is beneficial for teaching literature online. On the basis of responses collected, data analysis is formed. Now, the first question in the survey is, are your school, college or university ICT equipped? It is very, very important question that that uh, if the if the student is not able to access technology in school colleges or the university then who is going to promote the student so you can understand by looking upon the screen that nearly one fourth places are not equipped with the required ict facilities you can understand that even the schools and the and the education institutions are not equipped with ict skills now are the students tech savvy because this is very very uh, important question that do students have any access to technology do they comfortable with technology so you can understand that more than three students out of five are not tech savvy which is a matter of concern but it is this ratio is only about the students who are studying literature ratio is more in technical studies now the next important question is that that which, which way the students are comfortable with because if they are not comfortable with online teaching then online classes will not be suitable for them so you can understand by looking upon the screen that still majority of the students are comfortable with conventional classroom teaching style so you can understand that 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 they are not ready for online classes as such now which technique is beneficial in teaching literature classroom blended on the online teaching so blended is the choice of more than half of the teachers and there is no positive response for online teaching blended teaching is that when you are combining the face to face teaching with the ict equipment so blended teaching is more in concern and consideration rather than the online teaching now which technique you often use being a teacher of literature so more than 5 sorry more than four out of five teachers still prefer to teach in the classroom so you can understand that that even the teachers are in the favor of classroom teaching so you can understand that if the teacher is uh, uh, is in the favor of classroom teaching then how students can have access to technology who will promote them now which technique is better to teach theatrical plays in literature? You can very much understand that uh, theatrical plays is very, uh, very important part of literature. So in teaching plays, we have to have the facial expressions, we have to have the communication skills and the base to form it. So uh, an analysis of the text as well, dialogue forming and all that. So opinion is divided for the classroom teaching and blended teaching. So you can understand that people and the teachers are also in the favor of blended teaching rather than the online teaching alone at the moment. Now, I think this is the last question of my survey that online teaching is suitable for literature. So, which online teaching whether suit the literature or not it is basically this that one third responded except that online teaching is effective for teaching literature but at the same time nearly equal number that is approximately 30 percent disagree to it so in such case according to me blended teaching seems to be a midway in the current scenario despite the data suggest three out of five students are not tech savvy and one fourth places are not equipped with ict facilities 
and majority of student enjoys learning in the classroom so therefore one can say that though covid 19 has put further fuel into the online teaching and online teaching is catching the pace but possibly the coming decade that is 2030 or uh, or the future or in the future belongs to the blended teaching if not purely online teaching now as far as the conclusion of my presentation is concerned i am talking about i am in the favor of blended learning and teaching which combine the best of face to face instruction and online instruction which has dialogue persistence spontaneity flexibility and it also increased the student responsibility room for rich media and collaboration and consistent feedback also my presentation is open for questions hello uh, ruji ma'am i think you are online yes uh, the presentation was good and i think you are all for uh, blended learning ma'am yes hello ma'am you are online please unmute yourself and speak hello hello ma'am you are online can you hear me okay can you hear me ma'am ruji ma'am ruji tomar dr ruji tomar okay she was online just now i don't know anyway uh, there are no many questions so we go on to the next presentation it is by sarumadi k so uh, sarumadi okay. k is the next presenter uh manduji ma'am there is something wrong with your uh, internet connection so next is sarumadi Hello? okay is it uh, who is it uh, sarumadi or ruji ruji oh okay ruji ma'am uh, maybe we'll take up any if any questions at the end i'm going to the next presenter okay, okay because uh, i couldn't uh, connect you Yes. Okay. So, thank you so much. Okay. 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 We will we'll take up any if any questions come. All right. Uh, so here we have uh, Sarumadi K, uh, and she's going to speak on COVID nineteen, <clears throat> a key for improvement and change acceptance in teaching and learning pedagogy. Okay. And she's uh, from PSGR Krishna Mal College for Women, Coimbatore. Uh, she's a blogger, and. Uh, the motto she has always been following hard work leads to success and mother is the best motivator great great uh, sarumadi over to you for uh, your presentation topic we are going to discuss about today is covid-19 a key for improvement and change acceptance in teaching and learning pedagogy namaste i am doing my second ma english literature in psgr krishnamal college for women kwamatur so the topic we are going to discuss about today is covid-19 a key for improvement and change acceptance in teaching and learning pedagogy Carol Dweck Carol Dweck is an American psychologist who is also a professor at uh, of psychology at Stanford University she was born in New York her primary interest of research are uh, uh, are in motivation and personality development her key contributions relates to the implicit theories of intelligence so in her book new psychology of success uh, which was published in 2006 she talks about mindset she also makes a mention of mindset in a ted talk which she mentions as changing mindset according to this theory the mindset that is the ch- when there is a challenge the person or the student is able to adapt themselves to a newer path this she called as entity theory human beliefs are fixed fixed or invariant according to this theory she suggests that entity belief can read 
lead us to make rigid uh, judgments and can limit the paths we choose that which she terms as changing mindset in case of uh, in case of a strategy uh, a person can develop two ways to overcome the situation the first way is too hard for you to solve and the second one is are you not smart enough to solve these are the two ways which a person thinks so this changing mindset was uh, developed in university of postmount changing mindset here the current crisis faced is uh, the students and the teachers are not able to uh, be in a classroom setup or an educational environment this is due to the fact that there is an overgrowing pandemic across the entire globe and the current uh, the students are making themselves compatible with the current trends as long as as with the teachers so the the, the challenge is like Okay, ah, uh, but it's playing. Well, there's something ah uh, wrong with the telecasting of it. It seems. Okay, ah, uh, so we'll do do one thing. Ah, uh, we'll go to the next presentation. Let's we'll check what's wrong with the slides. See, it was okay when we played it before, but ah, uh, some problem. Okay, so we'll ah uh, we'll go to the next presentation and we'll have this as a. final presentation last presentation so uh, next presenter is next presenter is shilpa k ashok and uh, shilpa will be presenting on familiarizing some connection problem oh oh it's a connection problem that's it If just two more, can you hear me? You can hear me, right? Okay. Ah, uh, you know what happened? Anyway, I'm uh, next presenter is Shilpa K. Ashok, and she's going to present on familiarizing the unfamiliar when literature learning treats the technological path in the post-COVID world, so that. paper 2 is a paper on literature in the post covid scenario Logical path in the post-COVID world. COVID-19, the epidemic that originated in China and subsequently spread to other countries, has disrupted not only the global economy, transport, trade, and industries, but also the education system beyond description. In the face of the uncertainty of this epidemic, people started depending exclusively on online marketing, online shopping, online entertainments, and online payments for their daily needs. in the education sector as well it is a big challenge both for the teachers and for students how to teach and how to learn so in many places online learning also has started in this presentation i am going to share the ways in which online literature learning can be made possible during and after covid-19 so for uh, for various reasons we depend on internet uh, including for information and knowledge education for banking for shopping for marketing for communication and for entertainment time has proved that internet and technology are going to dominate the future electronic version of books that is ebooks is available today digital literature that is works created uh, exclusively on and for digital devices like computer tablet and mobile phones became a genre 
Stephen King, King, the the American author of horror fiction, published his novella Riding the Bullet in 2000 as the world's first mass market e-book. During the first 24 hours, over 4 lakh copies of his book were downloaded. E-readers like Amazon Kindle improved the quality of reading experience to many. All these electronic or digital advancements show that literature is breaking itself free from printed text. In e-learning also we have to take a change from the traditional way of using books pen and papers to the modern way of using internet and technology So for learning literature online we require a quiet place a computer or laptop or tablet or mobile phone internet connection and a earphone or headset On the official website of MOOC They tell that millions of people around the world use MOOCs to learn for a variety of reasons, including career development, changing careers, college preparations, supplemental learning, lifelong learning, corporate e-learning, and training, and more. This is also applicable for other online learning platforms like Swayam, Udemy, Coursera, etc. These e-learning platforms provide different courses in literature on different periods, genres. writers and theorists and uh, are very helpful for college students to enhance or supplement their learning in this situation of covid-19 starting online teaching all of a sudden may not be that much effective so enrolling to any of these courses will be a great relief to students in learning literature in depth social networking websites like facebook whatsapp instagram twitter telegram and youtube have become a part of our daily life we can share our feelings upload images and can communicate with our friends through these sites these apps can also be used as a platform for learning literature also teachers can create a group including all the students they can share ebooks and pdfs and can conduct quizzes also learning through these sites will motivate students to learn more there are a variety of channels on youtube which give classes on literature Subscribing to good YouTube channels also helps students to improve their knowledge. Moreover, there are so many qualified educators pages on Facebook and Instagram on which quiz and so many facts on literature have been uploaded. Following these pages also helps students very much. So many educators already have started teaching through video platforms like Zoom, Google Classroom and Skype. Google Classroom can be called as the online version of our traditional classroom. It ties Google Drive, Google Docs, Gmail, Sheets, slides which help educational institutions to go to a paperless system of teaching and learning. Giving assignments, grading, communication between teaching and students are also made possible through Google Classroom. So the traditional way of teaching has entered and an exciting age of self learning has begun one of the main role of a teacher at the higher education level is to promote self learning in students the technological progress the technological progress has changed the perspective towards education and internet has become an agent of self learning it has enabled us the access to vast information resources online courses itself have a big influence in creating student self learners it is not a matter how we learn rather what is our outcome at the end so both the students and teachers are not used to any issues like covid-19 before so the, so the main so the main problem here is the unfamiliarity many people are still not aware of the online courses and many other people are familiar in using social networking sites for personal needs but still unfamiliar in using it for learning literature this unfamiliarity along with lack of technological skills creates a block to both the teachers and learners to start teaching and learning the crisis that covid-19 epidemic has brought to us can be taken as an opportunity to understand the importance of online learning both teachers and students should be equipped with technological skill and should be ready to face any challenge in future so that thank you uh, shilpa that was a crisp uh, presentation are you online shilpa yes sir i am here oh that's great okay uh, so anyway that's a, a nice presentation and um, see if uh, somebody uh, somebody was to ask me what 
I, in fact, accelerated digitization of education. I would say it is not UGC, it's not MHRD, but it is COVID. COVID. So naturally, and you have uh, said it in your presentation. Uh, do you want to add something more to it, Shilpa? No, sir. No, sir. Come on, if you want. No, no, it's, it's done, right? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Okay, so you have uh, spoken whatever, I mean, everything is there in the presentation. That's what I understand. Okay, so we'll uh, again go to the next presenter. We have, uh, I mean, one more presented and one, uh, there was some disturbance in another, I mean, the previous presentation will be, I mean, we'll be presenting it again. Okay, so we uh, go on to the next presentation now. Right. Okay. And the next presenter is uh, uh, Sister Millie Adeline Pereira. Okay, uh, I hope she's uh, online. Hello, Sister, are you there? Sister? Okay, we'll go, we'll go to the presentation now. And then... Hello. Such an August gathering. I thank Christ College for giving me this opportunity. The title of my paper is Bridging Classroom Communication Vis-a-vis -vis Virtual Platforms Amidst COVID-19. This paper discusses how language classrooms involve an encounter of identities and cultures, particularly in second language contexts. The integration of new knowledge into the learner's existing language schema occurs with certainty only when the language is used spontaneously in a communicative situation. Such real communication however, implies the authentic engagement of learners and is reinforced through positive group dynamics in the classroom. However, the onslaught of the deadly pandemic COVID-19 globally has reduced our hallowed portals of learning to desolate graveyards, thus exposing our mortal and social vulnerabilities. Even in the face of adversity, the web of learning cannot be stopped. We have no alternative but to use web-based learning. Ironically, screen devices, virtual networks, augmented representations, which generally mesmerize, entice, and often enchain us, have ultimately led to a serious perspective altering and a paradigm shift. I'm sure that you will certainly agree that we are witnessing a digitalized learning revolution with high-tech, highly sophisticated, yet user-friendly virtual platforms, e-tools and resources for data mining as well as for ensuring dissemination of knowledge and optimum learning during these critical times. Today, I believe that multimodal communication and pedagogical restructuring is imperative to make English language classrooms more vibrant environments for learning and collaboration through a holistic integration of language skills, 
core communicative competencies and 21st century skills to visual learners and reinforce their unique voice and identity. Finally, here are a few practical points for bridging classroom communication vis-a-vis -vis virtual platform amidst COVID-19 pandemic. Provide opportunities for students to take responsibility for the management of their own learning. Enable learners to gain knowledge of a range of subject matter related to their needs, interests and aspirations. Keep abreast with the latest techno tools to enhance learners' communicative competencies and language skills. Provide learners with positive motivation to build synergy, create interest, foster enthusiasm, remove fear and inhibition. Use a repertoire of communicative strategies and scaffolding techniques to bridge pedagogical disconnects. Show personal interest in the success of each learner and communicate your unconditional positive regard for each individual vis-a-vis e-platforms. Express ideas clearly and explicitly by using verbal, visual, vocal tools and effective as well as appropriate non-verbal behaviors, gestures and expressions. Build an educational value system characterized by trust, collaboration, and openness to change. Make effective use of humor during meaning negotiation processes and interactions to avoid monotony and boredom. Be professional, look professional, and set professional goals and expectations. Thank you. God bless you. I know Sister Mila is online. Anyway, thank you. And I know the difficulties with which you prepared this presentation because of uh, rain and uh, storm in Goa. Uh, thank you, Sister, for your presentation. I hope you are online, Sister. Sister, are you online? You are unmuted, Sister. Unmute. Uh. So, okay, hello. but hello, but uh, again, sister, there's some some something hello. wrong. There. Yeah, yes, yes, I can hear sir. you, but uh, I mean bandwidth problem is there, no, sister. Bandwidth, you, I think uh, you, you cannot talk. Oh, sister, nothing can be heard. Okay, so we are. I mean, maybe uh, if time permits, we'll uh, take up the questions at the end, and we are going to the last but one presenter because last presenter. Yo, it's 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 uh, last presenter will be the presenter. Uh, we are, we are, I mean, the, the slide uh, didn't work for one presenter. We'll and uh, she'll be the last presenter. Now our next presentation is by Saleh Atlam. Uh, she's from sorry, he's from Aurangabad, Maharashtra. Influence of social media on EFL. Yemeni learners in Indian universities during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so it's uh, then it, it, the presentation is by Saleh Atlam. So over to you, sir, for your presentation. Okay, good. Is this the presentation? I'll try to see what I'm doing, okay? Like the blame. 
working uh sister can, could you mute some mute everyone mute everyone somebody is okay what am i to do with this okay right hello everyone it's a pleasure for me to participate in your conference it's an honor for me to be a part of this important conference first of all let me introduce myself very quickly i am saleh ahmad muhammad al tam from republic of yemen i am a lecturer at al baida university faculty of education and science rada english department currently i am ma student at dr baba saheb ambedkar maratawada university english department let me introduce my topic very quickly my topic entitled influence of social media on efl yemeni learners in indian universities during covid-19 pandemic social media has become so popular among the young generation and more hello everyone it's a pleasure for me to participate in your conference it's an honor for me to be a part of this important conference first of all let me introduce myself very quickly i am saleh ahmad muhammad al tam from republic of yemen i am a lecturer at al baida university faculty of education and science rada english department currently i am ma student at dr baba saheb ambedkar maratawada university english department let me introduce my topic very quickly my topic entitled influence of social media on efl yemeni learners in indian universities during covid-19 pandemic social media has become so popular among the young generation and more time is spent using social media for different purposes using social media for education has become a necessity for learners as well as teachers especially during covid-19 pandemic the novel coronavirus disease 2019 started in wuhan city of china and has extended speedily all over the world the virus is principally spread between people during close contact so people globally are confined at homes hence learners and teachers now and more than any time before started to use social media for learning and teaching those teachers and learners of efl who want to go beyond the traditional styles of teaching and learning are obliged to use technology in general moreover those social applications like facebook twitter youtube whatsapp etc may be the only choice of teaching and learning during covid-19 pandemic the present study aims to scrutinize the efficiency of using social media on efl yemeni learners in indian universities during covid-19 pandemic this research covers for social media facebook twitter youtube and whatsapp the research methodology that is used in this research is quantitative design using an online questionnaire the questionnaire was distributed online using a closed ended questionnaire google forms was exploited in this study the findings indicate that learners spend more time using social media for learning the english language 
And listening is the most improved skill when using social media for learning the English language. Results also indicate that using social media makes learners acquire and practice new vocabularies and decrease their spelling errors. Finally, YouTube is the most used social media platform for learning the English language. More research is needed to clarify the impact of other social media such as Snapchat, Instagram, WeChat, etc. on EFL learners. Further research is also recommended for investigating the impact of social media on each skill separately. Because of the time limit, I have to skip many parts, but I am doing my best to deliver in the ideas in the time limit. From this study of influence of social media on 120 Yemeni learners of EFL in Indian universities during COVID-19, it looks obvious that those learners spend more time using social media than before. Social media has become a crucial part of their everyday life, and it has become also a daily habit among them, especially during the pandemic. Learners' replies indicate that they use social media for learning English frequently, and they feel that they improve their listening skills when using social media more than the other skills like reading, writing, and speaking. Social media in particular can be used to develop learners' speaking capabilities. The responses of the participants of the study also reflected that using social media benefits them to acquire and practice new vocabularies and it has also helps them to decrease their spelling errors. Learning also, uh, or learners also perceive YouTube as the most social media used for learning the English language, especially for improving their fluency and their listening skills. Furthermore, learners' attitude towards social media platforms as a pedagogical tool is positive. They feel that their interaction with lecturers and classmates is improved, and this improvement leads to overall improvements in their academic performance. The findings also revealed that learners feel that using the social media for learning English is entertaining and exciting. But some learners confessed that they waste their time when using social media in general, and this may be the disadvantage and main challenge of social media. Because learners don't feel the passage of time when using social media, especially when chatting with friends, so we may welcome this use of social media for learning English, but we have to be careful of the disadvantages. To sum up, the study addressed the influence of social media on learners in general. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, further investigation on the topic should be addressed and be held by future researchers who may investigate the influence of social media on each skill separately so that a wider perspective can be revealed. So this study opens a door for further research on the same topic and future studies similar to this study might overcome limitation of this study. Thank you very much for listening. I, I hope that everybody understood my topic. Thank you. Presentation from Yemen. We are happy to have you here. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you want to add something to your presentation, Adlam? Yes, yes, sir. Then uh, what, one, what, uh, okay. Mm, okay, sir. Uh, no, I was about to ask you what brought you to India? 
Uh, I am here on a scholarship, sir. On a scholarship. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, okay, now, man, uh, why you chose India to do your scholarship? That's a question. It was given by Indian government, or uh, was it? Uh, uh, it was. Uh, was it given to you by Yemenis? Yemenis government. Was yes, yes, sir. It was given by my government, and the, you know, all Yemenis, thousands of Yemenis are in India for education. Yes, yes, I know, I know that. Sir. Okay, that's it. That's 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 what I asked you. I mean, uh, you are, and why you chose India? Maybe there are other choices for you too. Uh, nice, uh, nice to have you here, uh, Atlam. Um, uh, do you want to add something to it? What do you yes, say? Yes, yes, one, yes, very quickly, sir. You know, yeah, sir. Quick, uh, so, quick. Yes. Social media is very useful for learning in general and for learning English in particular. Yeah. And as teachers, we, we may create our own channels, for example, in YouTube and start to deliver yes. our lectures to everyone, especially Yo. during COVID-19. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it, sir, because uh, people are into it. People are into it, sir, because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there is no other go. So that's why I said digitization of education was uh, accelerated or fastened by uh, COVID. Okay, that may be considered as a positive side of COVID because I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, of course, I know people are suffering, people are dying, but as far as education is concerned, it has contributed this digitization uh, of education. And thank you very much, sir. We have one more thank and you, I have one announcement to make. Immediately, this is the last presenter because we had some technological glitches with this presentation. And naturally, naturally, uh, we'll, this, is, this would be the last presentation. Then there will be a short address by uh, a senior professor of our department, uh, Mary Patrus. And then we'll have a just one minute word of thanks by another uh, one of my colleagues. And then the all English team would be in front of you for just uh, three seconds. Okay, that's how we are planning to wind up the, the whole show. And now it's uh, uh, Sarumadi K again, and uh, she's, uh, she'll be addressing you now. I'll try to play her video. Let's see. So over to you, Sarumadi. So Carol Dwake. Carol Dwake is an American psychologist who is also a professor at, uh, of psychology at Stanford University. She was born in New York. Her primary interest of research are, uh, uh, are in motivation and personality development. Her key contributions relates to the implicit theories of intelligence. So in her book, New Psychology of Success, uh, which was published in 2006, she talks about mindset. She also makes a mention of mindset in a TED talk, which she mentions at changing mindset. According to this theory, the mindset that is the ch when there is a challenge, the person or the student is able to adapt themselves to a newer path. This she called as entity theory. Human beliefs are fixi fixed or invariant. According to this theory, she suggests that entity belief can read lead us to make rigid uh, judgments and can limit the paths we choose that which she terms as changing mindset in case of uh, in case of a strategy uh, a person can develop two ways to overcome the situation the first way is too hard for you to solve and the second one is are you not smart enough to so solve these are the two ways which a person thinks so this Changing mindset was uh, developed in University of Postmount. Changing mindset. Here, the current crisis faced is uh, the students the and the teachers so, uh, are not able to, to 
be in a classroom properly. setup or an educational uh, environment this is due to the fact that there is an overgrowing pandemic across the entire globe and the current uh, the students are making themselves compatible with the current trends as long as as with the teachers so the ta- the challenges like unavailability of uh, classrooms maintaining of social distance and uh, other uh, other formal reasons has made the educational institution to scum to the only uh, possible way is which is uh, online pla- online platforms motivation so these current trends has motivated the students to follow uh, other methods of learning which is also uh, which uh, which can also relate to alternate platforms as a current trend changes the students are motivated to use online classrooms like telegram zoom app go in meeting apps etc so the details of the classes are informed prior to the students through message or whatsapp groups and the notes are also given to the students with the help of whatsapp documents or video recordings or pre recorded uh, documents so the classroom hours though they are reduced to a minimal level however the students are rec- are given the required information which they needed in a class day so so the merits of uh, this uh, this kind of education is development of cordial relationship between teachers and students which is the students are allowed and are permitted permitted to ask uh, any doubts regarding the subject to the teachers and there is a change much needed change in the educational sectors there is also a time limit which the students are subjected to attend the entire class and they will have to concentrate on the class so that they will have they will cope up in the further and uh, through online platforms they are able to easily communicate and they are also helping uh, globally to maintain a social distance the demerits of uh, of online learning is network issues which uh, some of them might suffer overcrowding of classrooms that is in online platform only uh, one person can be teaching at a time they uh, the students will not be able to raise question immediately they will have to wait for their own uh, for their own chance classroom setup the the gradual formation of an educational institution the basis of an educational institution is a classroom setup which is also being missed um the monitoring of teachers teachers are unable to monitor the students within just two hours of the time given they will not be able to concentrate on each and every student whether they are being attentive in classrooms or anything and uh, coverage of portions since the time is reduced to 2 to 3 hours uh, what this uh, what the teachers are forced to do is that they have to cover they are only given very little time to cover a very little portion so they will have to rush up and the interaction the current variations have motivated the students to adopt to newer trend and avail themselves to e-learning with alternative methods this is what carol calls as changing minds so when there is a challenge the mindset of the student and the mindset of the teacher which uh, helps them to find out newer ways to find out a fixed path so that they can achieve their goals this is what she names as changing minds thank you thank you charu hello hello uh, charu <coughs> are you yes, online sir, are you yes, online sir. yes sir i am online uh, uh, you want to add something to add something to it yes i do want to add sir yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. i'm i'm sorry that uh, my video had glitches oh, yeah yeah so, but, uh, okay okay i think the audio was audio, okay. uh, audio was better and yeah. i just wanted to add that uh, carol they uh, however she wanted to uh, bring out that uh, challenges can help the human mindset even your uh, we i mean uh, your uh, your, your uh, it's unstable i mean uh, something wrong with her uh, okay it's not heard it's all it's not heard it's not heard properly maybe it's in uh, something wrong with your uh, internet connection internet connection is not good the, uh, sir right now no no it's yes, not i do good. have a connectivity issues connectivity issues are there okay anyway uh, thanks for your uh, 
uh, presentation. Okay, and uh, stay with us. We we will wind up the whole show in maybe in uh, five to five minutes from now, five to eight minutes from now. And before we go to uh, the valedictory address by one of our colleagues, a senior professor, we'll be just uh, okay. We'll have the valedictory address, and then uh, we'll have a short video again from uh, from <clears throat> Aurel. Uh, so that if you want, you can uh, contact them and have that wonderful uh, Edu software. Okay, now over to Professor, Professor Mary, Mary Patros. Thank you, Dr. Vargis. Hello, everyone. We are at the end of our two-day international conference on English literature and language education. Over these two days, we have been deliberating on how we can adapt to the COVID scenario and adopt new methods to impart knowledge of English language and literature. We have listened to excellent speakers like Dr. Cyprian, Dr. Gada, Dr. Andy, Dr. Mutmaina, and Professor Chris, who have opened our eyes to ways in which we can make this pandemic period a productive one. Teachers, particularly teachers of English, have been resistant to the digital wave, which has revolutionized most other fields like banking, medicine, etc., since the 90s. One main reason for this is our fear that rise of technology will make teachers redundant. However, our eminent speakers and presenters have very effectively shown us how facilitation of learning through technology can provide students with a chance to learn in new and interesting ways. Teaching is a complex job requiring a range of skills, which cannot be matched or replaced by machines. So I fully agree with Dr. Uh, with Dr. Varghese and Professor Chris that technology will never replace teachers, but teachers who know technology may replace those who don't. We, the English Department of Christ College, Kerala, India, hope that you have benefited from this two-day conference. We also hope that you will be able to we will be able to host more of such conferences, though not in such dis distressing times. The thousand plus registrations, active participation and feedback from various parts of the world is a tremendous encouragement for us. I speak for all of us when I say that it's been a stimulating experience. We look forward to your support in all our future ventures. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Professor, Professor Mary Patros. Uh, and now, We'll be having a very short video of this Edu software. class e-learning software with live virtual classroom. Orel Edu is brought to you by Orel Technosystems India Private Limited, a leading global technology solution provider since 2002. Every step we take is based upon the expediency of our customers and that is why we continue to maintain a stellar position in the sector with an extensive range of contented clientele. Over 5,000 clients across 50 plus countries use Orel products with 10 million learners and instructors across the globe. The experts team of uh, are well tra trained to attend the global customers and services available round the clock with real-time response. Orel Edu is changing the whole replica of learning during these present times. It is carefully designed to meet the emerging needs that the education industry and you can easily manage the learning manual online. 
e-learning has been elevated from a conventional classroom onto the desktop and now into mobiles. Oral Edu enables the management and the delivery of learning <coughs> content and the resources to students and allows for anytime, anywhere access as well as along with the create and view reports, collect online payments and deliver learning modules across mobile devices. Oral Edu offers the potential for students to study on their own pace and it is both teacher and student uh, centered. A test can be administered and scored quickly and efficiently. Computerized scoring provides the opportunity for a cost-effective method to teach better tests beyond multiple choice, including simulations and constructed responses. Oral Edu is a powerful all-in-one platform and it's the world's fastest growing e-learning solution which ensures an exceptional balance of visual, audio and practical methodologies so that the users are engaged and provided with optimum learning experience. Oral Edu is compatible with cloud, Android and iOS tabs, mobiles, thin clients and end computing etc. with unique features like parent interface to monitor the student performance, the principal manager interface to monitor the teacher activity, instant scoring, e-exam module for easy evaluation and comprehensive reports. Having said this, we have shared our brochure on the Telegram group. We will send you more details on your email. Thank you for your time. Please do visit our website oraledu.com for more details. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I now invite one of my colleagues, that is uh, uh, Shindo for the vote of thanks. Good evening, one and all. I believe that all of us have had a very enriching intellectual discourse since last two days and two day international conference on English literature and language education, embracing change in COVID times. I take this wonderful opportunity to thank all our keynote speakers, Dr. Cyprian, Dr. Gada, Dr. Anti, Dr. Matmania, and Professor Chris for uh, uh, delivering a wonderful lecture. Uh, in the conference. I also take this opportunity to thank all the presenters, participants, and well-wishers, those who uh, made this event uh, success. I also take this opportunity to thank uh, the principal in charge, Dr. Jolie Andrews, Christ College, the IQC team, the technical team, and the Endair English department for making this event a success. We have had uh, almost a uh, thousand plus participants in this event. Therefore, I take this opportunity to thank the head of the department and especially the host and coordinator KJ Wakis for his uh, effort in conducting this program. Thank you one and all. So thank you, uh, Shindo. Thank you, Shindo. Uh, so uh, we are coming to a close of this uh, two-day international seminar. And uh, I think... Uh, our team is here, our team. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, but, but before that, I think uh, we, we, we are here all and have a look at uh, our uh, team. Okay, team, yeah, on my uh, yeah, left, uh, the uh, head of the department, and you can see Anusha in uh, pink churidar, Shruti, okay, and uh, yes, see, uh, now you are seeing a very, a young smart boy behind and that is our technician Prajish and uh, you have already seen uh, Shindu sir and uh, Mary ma'am uh, one of my senior colleagues so we have been working uh, what do you call uh, in the sense uh, burning the midnight oil for the last two weeks uh, to organize this seminar and sorry for the technological glitches it is just the just part of the show uh, and no one can help it so with this, uh, we would uh, like to say adieu to all. And uh, But before we part, we are uh, unmuting all. Okay. Uh, we, we have already unmuted all. If you want, you can, for, uh, maybe for uh, uh, 
one minute you can share your experience and this how we will be uh, we have unmuted all i think right okay mute unmute them everyone okay all on zoom and of course uh, those who are on uh, youtube live cannot be i mean uh, cannot interact with us so do, whoever is on zoom can say a uh, hi and then uh, we close for the day all are unmuted i, I think yes you can uh, share your uh, what do you call it? your own experiences for one minute because uh, yes 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 if anyone i know that you have been sitting for last 7 hours together speak to me huh? can i speak yeah sure sure you can speak you can speak uh, sir first of all i thank you for the opportunity uh for presenting our papers and it was a innovative one sir thank you uh, never i have done this uh, recording session printed <laughs> so it's time saving yes yeah, time, time saving time saving and it won't uh, affect the connectivity, connectivity issue yes. yes sir so my uh, request is to continue such conferences uh, at least once in a month sir once in a month <laughs> one day i don't one know one day seminar yeah different topics they will be sure we will be very we will we'll very seriously look into it yes, because we have been uh, because we had some six keynote speakers yes, around uh, uh, 40 presenters and yes, we took sir. almost 7 hours each day yes, to sir, complete one it. more suggestion sir one more suggestion tell me, tell me when you are collecting the recorded videos yes rather than uh, playing it again if you mm. share us the link mm -hmm. you can just have a plenary okay right right you can just have a plenary and mm. the recorded video videos you share us the link and it will be similar to paper presentation only but the problem is yeah that, that, that's again a suggestion yes, because sir. i think everyone who yes, is sir. here wants their uh, videos to be seen uh, okay. live live like i mean uh, all over the world okay okay, okay. because okay. we had uh, representation from 52 countries participants around okay. 1300 participants okay. who have registered and okay. now we got feedback from around uh, about 900 so okay. at least about 900 i mean have attended okay. we don't know whether they full, uh, attended the full session but okay. they were here almost okay. uh, on two days okay. and we have uh, over around 1000 uh, feedback forms have been received now uh, 200 more is to receive but we'll be just closing the link now uh, okay. so let that 1000 uh, get uh, the, the certificates not all okay so the regis all registered are not going to get certificate but only people who have filled in the the feedback. Uh, I mean feedback forms and you are there uh, and those who are returned it uh, okay so naturally that that's it so thanks for the suggestion thank you sir uh, let i think we'll keep that telegram group it, now it's 800 sure, uh, participants more than 800 are they we'll sure, keep sir. he will we'll keep it live sure, through uh, what do you call uh, some information change because this video tutorials which yes. i asked for was in fact an idea which came to me because otherwise uh, almost 50 60 presenting it will yes. be very difficult for them to live come yes. come on live even yes. some had uh, for interaction some problems yes. connectivity issues so yes. we cannot just close our eyes to all this yes, but sir. we will have to adapt to the situation and go for and i am sure most of the presentations were really good yes. just because they were recorded videos yes. so when you come on live because yes. i i'm sure i some participants told me that they have uh, uh, gone uh, recording it Uh, four or five times yes. rehearsed it five times so most of them have done their best yes. in the presentations yes. so there is another aspect of this kind of conferences because you can go i mean re re I mean re edit it re re record it and send the best videos to us okay thanks for the suggestions and be in the group and sure, let's sir, uh, sir. Let, let's do something uh, different maybe sure. in the next next one okay so thanks for the suggestion mm. okay. uh, anyone else Yes, sir. Post, yeah, yeah. Who is this? Uh, Kumara Balaji, sir. Kumara Balaji, come on, Kumara Balaji. Yes, sir. Your feedback, uh, sir. Greetings to everyone. Thank so you. So it was a pleasant and it is different experience for me where I just went for some other conferences, but I it is apart from my expectation. Okay, great. Thank so, you. So, thank you. So I didn't expect this much. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't express it through my words. Okay, thank so you. So that sir. much thank I need you. to uh, say my gratitude towards the. the organizers okay. of this college sir 
Christ College. Okay, I was asking my colleagues to listen to you because so so much positive feedback. Okay, because we we thought of because when UGC thinks of these kind of seminars, often they demand there's a criteria. It has to be at least two days and the papers, keynote speakers, everything. There's a criteria for UGC. So yes, I was uh, trying to stick onto that criteria so that everyone is benefited from UGC for that. Okay, so yes, uh, thank you very much for the positive words that you have said. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Nikki is yeah. there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who else? Who else? Because we'll give a chance to Nick last, because he'll do the winding up, being the lead speaker. Uh, maybe uh, anyone else uh, who want to experiment, share their experience, because these days sharing is always caring. That's it. So when you share, we. Yeah, Noble, come on, come on, Noble. Quick. Hats off to the entire team. Thank for you, hosting Mike. a productive endeavor thank you okay thank you. so it was really a great challenge to incorporate paper presentations in the webinar and yeah, i was able it. to make my maiden paper presentation during the lockdown period it's really yeah been... that's great so the i think <laughs> the credit goes to us too right the team yeah. christ thank it's you only because of thank the you. entire team of christ college department of english headed by mr tommy okay yeah yeah so tommy you, sir. okay okay i know the connection <laughs> okay. Okay, thank okay. You. thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you looking forward to more endeavors of this kind okay thank you anyone thank else you. You. i see anandhi i think anandhi ma'am hello Yes, yes. Uh, speak, ma'am. Speak. No. The sessions were very informative, very Thank enriching. You. Thank you. And I never see that recording is is played, and it saves time. Saves time, and it you can perfect it too. That's it. Saves time, and you present your best often, right? Thank you, sir. And even the sir, uh, Nick, sir, I think. Yeah, Nick, Nick, Nick is there. Okay, yes, Nick is there. And yes, see, a awesome. keynote speaker, a keynote speaker yes, being with us in spite of her mother's birthday. I think you might have uh, brought a nice gift for your mother. I am sure because you are such a loving person, such a considerate person. So I think, uh, uh, I mean, your mother must be uh, proud of you. Okay, uh, Nick, sir, come on. Uh, yes. Uh, did Did you want to ask me something in particular? Because I think the whole history is known to our participants, sir. Because of the, I mean, messages on the chat box in the chat box, and the way you presented, I think uh, they know you fully from the day you were born till now. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was a yes. great experience yes. for all of us interacting with you, sir. And I think Pritham K want to yeah. say something. Pritham. No, oh, sir. No. No, no, nothing, nothing. Uh, because, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, with the, uh, if anyone else is there to speak, uh, we can give uh, a chance. Uh, am I audible? Feel, yeah, you are audible. And please introduce yourself. Oh, there are network issues. It seems, sir. And Francis, sir, I can see uh, you. Oh, come on, come on, speak, ma'am. Speak, ma'am. Quick. Okay, sir. Uh, are we running short of time? Yeah, yeah. Really, really. See, some have skipped their lunch. They are waiting to take lunch. We we are planning to have our lunch together. That's it. It's already four. <laughs> so, uh, if you could. Hello, Bagi sir. Uh, Hello. Tell me, tell me, Francis sir. Quick. You have to be very quick. Maybe you can uh, respond in half a minute, sir. Quick. Francis sir, I can hear you. Yeah, Bagi sir. Uh, it has been an excellent opportunity. I must admit that uh, the level of patience you and your team have shown. Thank you. Uh, it has been tremendous uh, getting us across uh, through the, all these technical issues. Also, never losing your composure. Tremendous <laughs> no, job, no. I must say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think I must be the only person who is a non-English uh, department. No, there, were a, there were a few French teachers. I mean, uh, foreign it? language teachers were there, but all language. You are from yes, management, sir. so uh, I think you Correct. would be the only person who was attending. Maybe I mean, odd man out. Okay, <laughs> thank you. But odd man is always in, sir. We, we learned a lot. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, I must also say that the level of discussion which happened, which is happening in the chat box, was tremendously stimulating. Yeah, Apart from that's what was it. going on screen, in the yeah. chat box was uh, alive, a flame, in fact. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I think more discussions were see more more discussions were in the chat box than uh, what you call online, because very I, very I I've seen it, but uh, yeah, I I would have loved. 
it to incorporate all that but it's not possible because we are running short of time it's already four we have been here on online almost seven hours thank you very much thank sir. You, sir thank you so i think sir, thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much and what about uh, any other or else we'll go to nick that's it anyone who want to respond hello sir i would like to thank christ college for the idea of the pre recorded presentation it was really yeah. wonderful thank you the concept was very great i think sanjana is speaking right yes sir okay that's great but uh, see we had a big doubt sanjana see at least i had to admit you 101 times what was is it because of the connectivity issue you were yes, just sir. going out and coming in <laughs> yes sir i have connectivity issues very huge connectivity uh, okay. issues maybe <laughs> in this two day international webinar you are the person who was readmitted at least 200 times okay thank so you i am lucky to be at the conclusion of the conference that is yes, a great yes. thing <laughs> okay thank you sanjana keep in touch through whatsapp okay. group and also maybe through a telegram group anyone else before we go to nick thank you the sir. lead presenter anyone else no no so uh, it's nick the floor is open to you nick maybe you can speak for 2 minutes and we close the seminar Okay, so I uh, just wanted to thank you very much for this opportunity. It was a real pleasure and a great honor to be here with you. Uh, um, let's say uh, I've learned a lot from my fellow teachers out there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, teachers from all around the world. Yes, and I and thank them for that. Work. See, I mean, how, how? Let me ask you one question: How many letters you type in one minute, sir, or one second? Because you're so, you're so quick. Yeah, yourself. Because the chat box uh, is full. I can when when I'm tired, I yeah. can type more than 180 words. Yes, per okay. minute. Oh, great, sir! 180 when words I, per minute. I think that that should be a world record. I don't know. Uh, not really. Not really. <laughs> I know guys out of the uh, uh, who, who, guys who came out of MIT, the Massachusetts MIT. Institute of Technology. Oh, my, 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 MIT. Like 300. 300 oh mit see uh, there are uh, students who look forward to mit fingers are very fast fast fingers 300 per minute oh that's only for yeah. mit sir and i can i can read i can read 5000 pages in 24 hours 5000 pages in 24 hours oh that's great again you're tired you're tired. tired yeah okay sir yes. so let's wind up yeah yes. let's wind so, up sir uh, maybe the concluding message Uh, I think uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us. Yes, all the panelists, all the speakers, all the presenters, and all the attendees. Yes, to uh, create, yes, and establish, well established, uh, worldwide community yeah, of language perfect. teachers, language lovers. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's so, uh, what 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 I would like to ask you, and uh, of course, Christ College, yes. is to organize. a conference once yes. a month once a month hours. again sir <laughs> see i don't know whether see we have been working almost two to three weeks um, behind this and if possible we'll go not such a conference but individuals i will help you for free oh that's great sir so it's accepted okay. it's accepted it's accepted okay, okay. once a month a conference yes. okay let's see a two hour two hour conference yes two hour, yeah uh, maybe two, two speakers up to date yes with key speakers key speakers, three speakers three. less less speakers of course okay. not so many speakers great yes. great and great. a couple of presenters maybe a couple of presenters to yes. short presentations okay. short issues to be solved okay. yes to keep the communication channel yes live. open live live and open uh let me tell you something about communication uh, just to understand how i see the world yes communication in today's world requires culture those problems we have in communication are rooted in who you are in encounters with a different mentality different meanings a different tie between language and consciousness solving these problems inspired by such encounters inspires culture yes sir grammar and the dictionary the way we used to teach languages yes language inside the circle are important yes but grammar 
will never be enough to communicate. And communication can occur without all the grammar. Language has to include more than just language inside the circle. To use the language, to live in it, all those meanings that go beyond grammar and the dictionary have to fit in somewhere. Okay. The circle that people and many yes, linguists throw along language has to be erased. And culture is the eraser. Yes, so culture is the only thing that can erase okay, the circle around, around language, yes? yes and sir. communication, of course. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's really great, sir. Even Gada Ma'am is with us now. And almost the others had to go just because uh, they had other commitments, uh, other programs. So that's nice. Nice to have you, Gada Ma'am. Thanks a lot for joining from Egypt. And thank you from joining from Italy. And we had Indonesian speakers. Thank you. So, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, there are suggestions from the participants and also from the keynote speakers to have um, a conference once a month. So we are planning, we are planning, let's see, one day or just two hours conference every month so that we are in touch, we, we stay, we stay united, we discuss, we develop our discussions. So anyway, thank you very much. Thanks everyone. So uh, with uh, great, uh, what do you call, happiness and uh, a lot of expectations for coming days, I call it a day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you all. So I'm closing bye. the meeting. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you all. It was a great experience. Come on, um, be on video and say bye. I can see many. Switch on your videos. Say just bye. Hi. hi. Bye bye. Bye. See we are VVC on the Shindu Society. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. See you. I see you. I see you, Salag. I see you, Aishwarya. I see you. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, Praveena, Praveena Thompson, I see you. Uh, it's a great experience. A great, great experience. Oh, Bushra. Hi, Bushra. Bushra, thank you. Thank you very much, Bushra. Right. Ashwati. Oh, Ashwadi, Ashwadi. Right, feed them. Then, uh, and Mary Prince. Yeah. And Mary Prince. Who else? Okay. Uh, Tommy, sir. And, and uh, Christine Anto. Linda P. Oh, Joseph. Why don't you unmute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and Mary. So it, was, it has been a wonderful show. And thanks for helping us to make this show a grand one. Oh, Christina and you, that's nice. Nice to see you on video. And uh, Silpa, where are you? And see, uh, yeah, yeah. See, they are asking me to stop. I may, I may not stop, that's it. Now, Kaur, thank you. I should, yeah, everyone. Silpa, hi, Silpa. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm 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 leaving. So I'm ending the meeting. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks, Ruji. Thanks, Praveen. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.